Well, it's Ryan and me, so I guess everyone is here. <laughs> I'm the popular girl. Throw me a pom pom and I'll get started. We're, we we are all Sakurai fangirls in the end. That's true. <laughs> the it's funny. Because I think back to... Sakurai, he's our man. Please put in... Proto man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, do you, what do you remember? Uh, I, I, as we have discussed, I had been out of the loop of Nintendo for so long. And then, I believe it was November 11th, 2017. Recorded date. When I met this Adonis of a man known as Drew. <laughs> okay. And, and Citation needed. Citation, Citation needed. needed. <laughs> and he... He has been deep into Nintendo culture for quite some time, as we all obviously know, but I was not. He brought to my attention three games in the order of uh, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and this new game. A, a, a couple months later, it was about this new game. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and fuck me. <laughs> <coughs> called Smash Brothers. I had no expectations. But Drew said, hey, you know, we're both off on uh, E3, uh, Nintendo's E3. Why don't we watch it together? <laughs> and we watched what essentially was a Smash Direct. It is Smash patch notes update. Yeah. <laughs> but we did get one incredible announcement that everyone is here. Followed by another incredible announcement that Yes, I guess, okay, fine, he can fit. So. Yeah, Ridley's five feet tall, but I bet it wasn't worth it. No, it was worth it. 100% worth it. I don't understand why it was such a disputed debate all the time, but. <laughs> I mean, I get it, because it's not like Ridley's 10 feet tall. He's always like 20 to 40. So, like, I get it. Is all of our tiny as shit? No. <laughs> but it, but it's also like that the the whole point of Ridley being so big is how small Samus is compared to Ridley. You never see Olimar fight anything that's like a, a person. So I think I that's, that's I think that's the difference if I had to guess. And I will say that I guess Sakura got the last laugh when he made one of Ridley's thoughts literally him standing up. <laughs> so I guess there's something there, but uh. Oh, the, the tagline, Ridley hits the, the big, big time. time. Yep. It was, he was just fight. he was just cramming down our throats. Yep, here you go, here's what you wanted. Even though he baited people for so fucking long. In and that. also, I, I know it's a glorified alt, pretty much, but let's talk about Daisy. What an excellent pick for an Echo Fighter. And it's, you know, the whole reason she's an Echo Fighter is so that she can have different animations because yes. if she had Peach's animations, wouldn't really fit. Wouldn't work. Yeah. But she's she's got all those nice little flourishes. She's That's, perfect. Isn't she better than Peach though? Because she's got like better speed or something like that. I heard. I can't remember. Uh, I don't know uh, <laughs> about that. I don't know. Uh, when the game came out, there was like one difference between one of their moves, and that was it. And then they patched that out. Because it was a mistake. So much for being different. But honestly, and honestly, like, yeah, there's no reason that they can't be different. Like, of course, yeah. I'd want them to be a little different in some way, at least like speed and weight. Something, yeah. But that Daisy does get to have her own animations that show off her personality. I'm in. I yeah. love it. I. I... An inkling, of course. We, I feel like everyone goes over inkling <laughs> because yeah, I, 
I don't want to go over Inkling because obviously that was kind of the whole thing where it's like, oh, we got the announcement for Smash right alongside the Inkling, so it's like, okay, clear, Inklings are going in Smash. But it's still, it's still a pretty good character. Yeah. There, there's definitely some things that could be tweaked, but that's for later. Lots of utility and splat roller and and the splat roller. It's so crazy that this busted character has a move to bury their enemies. I really hope we don't get a character that can do that with two moves. That will never happen in August 8th, 2018. Anyway, uh, so we, we watched the Nintendo Direct e3 2018 and also shout outs to uh not that there is much else there but uh the switch port of hollow knight shadow dropping yes, same day. I that day oh <laughs> i remember that was your first big like <gasps> like mo i wish we would have recorded that oh, one man. um so there was that then then um do you, let me know if you have anything to say or anything not much we, we can get into the august direct the first ultimate centric direct which by the way i i do not want to undersell that direct i think that is easily my favorite direct of smash ever like just showing off just like how much was in it it was like a true fanfare festival you started strong with the castlevania reveal yeah and you go immediately to the echo fighter which you're like oh my gosh we we were we were just hoping to get Excuse me, uh, what's his name? Simon. And then yeah. we got Richter. What the fuck? Yep. And then, um, within the span of, like, the next five minutes, we got Krom and Dark Samus. Okay, you can keep clowning on the blue hair sword equals bad. However... I, it's not that it equals bad, it's that I don't see much difference. Because he's an Echo Fighter? Is he? Yes! Because doesn't he have... He has Roy's moves and... Ike's up beat. Yeah, Ike's up beat. I just think it's crazy that, on top of Awakening already having a lot of representation with Lucina and Robin, uh, they explicitly said in that trailer for Smash 4, well, I guess I'll get my chance next time, and then they say, no, you'll get it now, in a final Smash animation. And then he never got his chance. So we got a character that was never, ever gonna happen, confirmed, but deconfirmed, and now it's happening. And Dark Samus, I never would have thought of in a million years. Really? Just I guess it's not really that I hadn't thought of her, it's that I, d I wasn't a, as big of a Metroid fan to really know. Yeah, but I kind of figured, like, okay, it's Samus and Ridley, and Zero Suit, I guess. That's that's it. Dark Samus, There's right like there. There's like three different Samuses. Because <laughs> Ridley wasn't enough. Yeah. The, um... <sighs> and then... <laughs> D -D -D. Yeah, he got his second reveal trailer. <laughs> yeah, he deserves it. He's a good lad. Yeah, and then he was clawed from the fucking skull <laughs> by, <laughs> by the new character King K. Rule, which I, when I look back at that, I kind of think like, wow, I can't believe he's in, like. I, it's not that I wouldn't have ever put him in. It's just that, like, that was really, like, a note to the fans. Like, hey, we're listening. Well, that's the thing, is uh, when people were talking about all the characters we voted for during the Smash ballot, King K. Rule was up there. I want to say the, the big, like, five. I'll say six. We'll say six. Besides returning characters, the big six I always heard about were, like, uh... Shovel Knight and Shantae, Inkling, uh, King K. Rule, Sora, and probably Gino. Probably. I mean, many others, too, got a lot of votes, but those six, like, especially, I would hear over and over and over again. King K. Rule was the top Nintendo pick that wasn't Ridley. Because, again, when, when we all took that poll, we assumed it was for Smash 4, and we assumed, well, if that's already stage hazard or boss, there's no chance. Yeah. So why bother voting for it? But Ridley's also gotten consistently a lot of fan requests over the years, so. You're also telling me how uh, 
you were thinking Mimikyu was going to be a fighter. Okay, wow, how... we really got to do that to me? I was just adding a little note. I wasn't trying to humiliate you. Well, it's okay. I humiliate myself all the time. Although, That's speaking not, of humiliation... That's the only Pokemon I was... <laughs> no! Don't go to the assist trophies! No! No, I was going to go, speaking of humiliation, the November 1st, 2018. Okay, hold on. You're skipping over some things. I am, but I I wanted to just say we're, we're getting there. You can take the wheel from here because you're much more learned than I. No, we were all here for the same stuff, but you, you skipped over one character in between. Hmm. Isabel. Oh, yeah, she was in the Isabel, Nintendo Direct. I, I prayed every night. <laughs> like a good boy. <laughs> because for Smash 4, my my super big, I don't think this will happen, but I can hope, was Palutena. Really? It was yep, Palutena? it was Palutena, because oh. Kitty Curse Uprising was just absolute Kino, and she was hot. She's the hottest girl. So wait, did that? That had to have been. That, that came out before Smash 4. Yeah, that was yeah, before okay. Smash 4. And also remember that she was saved for E3. So I felt extra special. <laughs> I was you gotta freaking treat that day. the fuck out. Along with the Mies and Pac-Man, man, that was good. Along with that, you got a cool anime sword fight in there. Yeah, yeah. The whole animation was pretty damn good, but... Um... Um, so, for, for Ultimate, I, I wouldn't say my most wanted, per se. My most wanted was probably Ridley. And then after that, it would have been, like... Magalore and then Isabel. I forget when I played it, but my most wanted was wanted wanted was probably Pyra and Mithra. Oh yes, and them too. Rex and Pyra. Yeah, Rex is and what Pyra we all said we all because said. that would make more sense. <laughs> huh. I don't remember anything. It sounded like a real cough. Um, it was. A uh, fishing rod. Hee <laughs> hee. Stop sign. I remember all the people saying, Isabel's never going to be in, she's not a fighter, as if the Animal Crossing player character was a is fighter. a fighter, and Alomar, and Peach. Peach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but yeah, she can't happen, bros. Who was one of the first characters in the game? Let's see, uh... Oh yeah, Jigglypuff, she's definitely a fighter. Well, you see, Pokemon is a turn bit See, these are the kind of arguments the Smash fans get into, and I don't want to replicate a whole one because we'll be here for days. And Captain Falcon, he's also a fighter. But I'm just... I'm just going into semantics. I'm just saying it's possible for anyone. Don't don't go into Code Yellow Smash fan territory. <laughs> semantics is their favorite word. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Minutia is their second. Uh... So yeah, then we got the uh, November 1st wreck, but before that, the Grinch leak, the third real leak I want to talk about. One night, or one day, I, I, <laughs> I hung out with Drew at a Wendy's, and we sat there and I just listened to him. As I listened did. to this prophet of my time <laughs> speak the gospel to me in a way that no man ever had ever done before. And I had no idea what was happening. No one did. That was the whole point. I think it was October 26th. It was a few days before. It was a couple days before. before. Um, and I know we didn't meet up for that direct. What? Just so weird. Very weird. Now, in hindsight, of course that shit was super giga fake. Like, of course it was. But what was the thing that made everyone kind of believe it? Was it just the hype factor? Well, that's the thing is there was a couple things that seemed to kind of line up. It was a bunch of little things that added together to make it seem more real than other fake leaks. Yeah, I was trying to remember that. And some of it was just good points, <coughs> and some of it was stuff that people were mistaken on. Um, so, like, for instance, the whole leak, so, you know, assuming it was real, right? Like, hypothetically, yeah. it came from... Uh, a French uh, company that, like, they were a printing company for, like, advertisements for companies, right? Yeah. And in that same screenshot of the Snapchat video, you see uh, promotional material for the Illumination Grinch movie, mm -hmm. which was coming out later that year. And uh, there was a specific render of, like, Grinch and Max that 
had not been released in the West, but had been released in overseas territories because Illumination is French. Yeah. So like American people thought that made the leak more credible when like if you were in say France or something, you had already seen that. So it wasn't like, oh man, this render's never been seen before, but you know, in like America and the UK, you know what I mean? It was a lot of little weird, confusing stuff like gotcha. that. Okay. Um, and who are the characters in it? It was uh, Ken, Shadow, Skull Kid, Banjo. Wait, no, I don't think this. <sighs> Ken, Shadow, Banjo, and Kazooie, Mock Rider, the Chorus Kids, Chorus Kids, Gino, Steve. Was no, what nope. Steven? Okay, I thought he was. I want to say there's a seventh, and I. Don't I remember who. Remember. Oh, Isaac! Isaac! Okay. Of course. That's the other thing, too! So, uh, there was, um, demos, uh, being played at, like, uh, tailgates, like, college tailgates is a promotional thing at the time. And in these tailgate demos, there was, uh, an item that looked like, it, it was like a bubble with, like, a sprout in it. And that looks like an element from Golden Sun. Okay. Cause there's like earth elemental shit. And that's it looks like one of the like menu symbols. So people thought <laughs> that was tying into Golden Sun before we had seen Isaac. You know what I mean? It was a bunch of just little things that little like things that just this seems up. more real than usual. This seems more real than usual. So I don't wanna clown on people that believed in it. Even, we definitely believe even it. though I'll, I'll call myself stupid completely for believing it but at the time it was it was just really weird it's the weirdest fake leak we <laughs> ever had okay it was very weird I mean also you gotta think of it in today's day and age what doesn't get leaked right a lot of things lot get spoiled and plus you you went a lot on the past where it's like hey a guy predicted all these Smash characters. Right. And you're just like, oh my gosh, it's happening again. I can totally see that being like a, your mind just saying like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I'm sweet. We got yeah. the next characters. I and can expect. You also have to consider, not that it's a great point, but you, you use a little bit of uh, understand, a little bit of empathy and understand that this game is crazy so far. We're getting everything we ever asked for. Inkling, K. Rule, Ridley, all every character's coming back. Most stages are coming back. Right. And all the other rumors are that there's only two characters left and it's Kennen and Cinderor. And that sounds underwhelming and we all think Sakurai wouldn't end on a on that like bland of a note, right? You're and right. then he you, ended on a worse note, but And no then one. you you get this leak that says, Oh no guys, Banjo's coming, Shadow's coming, Isaac's coming and compared to what people have been saying since June that Ken and Sinner are in the game, it's like, well, Sakurai is literally a, a wish granter. He's an actual genie. So we get this, and it doesn't seem immediately fake. Yeah. Well... They kind of put all their hope into it. With that said, seven more characters in time for the very last direct when that would have been a true miracle. I think we had seen seven up to that point. Yeah, that's that should have been enough to tip me off. Yeah, there was a lot already. Um, and not only that, but uh, I don't know. Part of me wanted to believe it, but I kept thinking in the back of my head when he kept saying, like, don't expect too many. And I was like, we already got a lot. And yeah. I was just like. You know, it'd be cool if it does happen, but I'm not going to be, like, super pissed if it doesn't. Yeah. Because it just, it was like, it's still a pretty loaded game, like... Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I will definitely say I wasn't super excited for Ken and Incineroar. Yeah, because Ken is an obvious pick in Incineroar. Like, some people like Incineroar more, but... Eh. I'm not saying, like, oh, Decidueye would have been the coolest pick of all time, but, yeah. like, I definitely would have preferred Decidueye if I had to pick between the two. It, I think it was really just a matter of the team, as well as Sakurai probably, had never tackled a character like that before, where you can just do a complete wrestling aesthetic. Yeah, and that, that's super cool. I like that Incineroar was in for that reason, because like the only other gr grappler we have 
kind of, sort of, is like Bowser in like some of his animations, but yeah. that's not his true play style, you yeah. know? And it's... I wouldn't say Incineroar has grown on me at all, but like... Like I said, I can see it. Um, Incineroar is one of those characters where like... I don't really care that much about the character, but I love the playstyle, like how I feel about a lot of sword fighters. Like, I don't give a shit about Fire Emblem, but I love the sword fighter playstyle because I, I like that it, it gives me a little bit of space for my enemies, but I can still have a lot of quick, flashy, swiping attacks, yeah. you know? Um, I, Smash often does that to me, where I, I will like a character more for their playstyle than where they actually come from. <laughs> But that's a good thing, yeah. you know? You can't expect Smash to get you into every game that's involved, but if you can at least enjoy playing as this character in this little fighting game, you know? Cool. Yeah, that's something. Uh, and then Piranha Plant. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really... It was so weird, too, the way it was. It was like, we're working on something special, and you're, and you're kind of, like, leaning forward, like, oh? Like, what's this? And... I can I can think of at least ten trailers right off the bat where reaction people just went, it's Gino, because when they saw the dizzy people or something, they thought, oh my gosh, and I'm just like, yeah, because it's you see Mario. I I was I didn't even know who Gino was, but I just looked at it. I was just like, what's happening? And then I see the prime plant, and I'm like, I'm not mad. I don't think you were either. You were just kind of like, this is a really odd last pick. The, the because it's it's a total you you define I remember what you said at the time you said you said it was like a joke character yeah and it's like it kind of yeah, is yeah which is fine yeah it's fine to have joke characters it's just weird to have it as the last as the last one and I believe too Piranha Plant came after uh, the second great assist trophying where we got a lot of deconfirmations like Shadow got deconfirmed. Isaac got deconfirmed. Uh, and Rex was shown off as a me costume. And yeah, us at the that. time figured, well, yeah, okay, Pyro and Mithra can fight on their own, but Smash is usually faithful, asterisk, citation needed, to how characters play in their original game. So it would be Rex along with Pyro and Mithra. Rex is a me costume. They're not happening. Yeah. No way these characters are happening at all give up hope and then oh one more thing and you end on the weird joke character yeah that was the weird you know, part if you had deconfirmed all those characters and then like k rule was the last one everyone would have been fine <laughs> you know? that's the thing too is like it was just underwhelming in the way it tried to surprise you it was just very like yeah like you just you, when i was watching that direct i remember being hyped for it and i just remember sitting there just like 40 minutes uh, because just like squinted eyes just like trying to figure the it out the other thing too is the the august direct had the opportunity to show way more features so they got to show yes. tweaks about like hazard toggle and custom rule sets and my music and stage morph and yeah music. Uh, squad strike um they got to show all that off smash down yeah um where the what was the november direct left with well um spirits and world of light and this is jumping ahead a little bit, but I mean, we've already talked about all the announcements before the game came out, so we can kind of use this to segue into the main game, unless there's anything else specifically to say. No, I mean, um, DLC fighters come later, but... Yeah, so the direct shows off Spirits, where it's like, it's basically event matches on crack, where to do our best to represent all these characters without actually putting them in the game, over a thousand mm -hmm. at launch. Mm -hmm. It's event matches where we tweak the stage and the stage hazards and the character stats and maybe they'll keep using specific moves, maybe they'll have backup, maybe a certain assist trophies will appear. Something to imitate it so it yeah. replicates the character it's supposed to right. be. Without having to make a whole 3D model for yes. like a boss fight or an assist, which is that's a pretty smart way to do it for a I, thousand characters. I fully get behind them on that. And I think I, I don't think I'd be opposed to seeing that type of thing again, because it certainly held my attention for a long time. Listen, how else are we going to get any recognition for numb diddly? <laughs> 
from I don't know. <coughs> um, but here's the thing: is they talk about spirits and they go on about it for a while, yes, like ten minutes. It's like okay, you're showing like three full matches now, and like we get it because you explained everything. And they talk about how you can you can save a a move set with the spirits to this specific fighter and choose it versus it. Yeah, okay, can you shut the fuck up now. And yeah. then they go right into World of Light, which is, here's adventure mode, not really, you're on a Denny's playmat, and on this playmat you get to fight spirits, which we just showed you. And then they spend like another five minutes talking about, you can choose Japanese audio on the English version. You can lower the volume of voices. Oh, okay. I remember that. <laughs> it wasn't a good direct. No, it was very hit or miss. And Not that everything in it was bad, but lame to end on. It was very informative, but just in all the wrong, wrong yeah. way. It wasn't hype. It wasn't hype. Yeah. Which is which is a shame, but you can't um, expect everything to be. But they no. saved like all of the most boring shit <coughs> last, and it just again, you can blame people for believing in something that seems fake. But look, you get a leak a few days before. It's seven characters we've always been asking <laughs> for, plus Mock Rider, <laughs> and then you get this immediately after. It's like ooh, your expectations kind of go down. And you're just like, eh. <sighs> I, I will say I had no expectations for uh, DLC fighters. I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, I think they announced at that time that there was going to be DLC. Yes, they did. They announced in the start there was going to be uh, five more DLC characters, just one more pass. They didn't reveal two. And then... Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, I went to the midnight launch because I am a weenie. I'm, I went. I went too. I am the man you see in the soy jack memes. That's me. I. That's right. I'm soy jack. Uh, I. I wait in line at the GameStop and, um, just like ten minutes before midnight, uh, they're showing at the Game Awards. It's just playing in the background on like a TV and on a laptop, and no one's paying attention to it because every single person in the room is talking about like, "Oh, dude, who you main in melee? Yeah, wasn't that like is this trophy cool in Smash Four? Dude, who are you gonna main? Out all the newcomers, everyone's talking. Yeah. There's like 50 fucking people in here. Uh, little did I know I would become a hero on this faithful evening <laughs> in, the, in the cold of winter. I would bring warmth to humanity." because the live stream isn't that loud. It's it's very quiet, almost silent. And I, I'm the only one watching. I look around multiple times to double check. I'm the only one watching because I'm like, oh, I want, you know, what's like Xbox going to show off, yeah. you know? Like, ooh. <laughs> and then the lights go out. And Jeff Keighley's like, what the fuck? And then... See Persona shit. I'm like, oh cool, they're gonna announce like DLC for Persona 5. Like, you know, like are they gonna announce a new updated version or like I wanna a hold on. I wanna play this in real time. Uh-huh. So it's like you're watching that trailer and Oh, I know what you're doing. And it just just start talking and Yeah, joke. I'll just make the sound of, paper, of yeah. a paper fishing around and that's when you realize it. Yep. So it's like just talk normally. Just talk normally about what you're saying. You're just like, oh, Persona, you know, just... I don't know if I could do like, that. Like, Persona's just happening. Oh, man. I I don't know if I could reenact ah, this. Also, dang. you didn't pause the recording? <laughs> what do you mean? No. <laughs> just leave it in. No, it's fine. Just leave it in. I didn't plan on I, cutting I, it. I'm not good at acting. I'm good at uh, recounting my memories for over four hours, but not acting. The, um, Point being, I, I applaud the attempt, though. <laughs> Improv teacher. Uh, the fucking en envelope turns around, and it's smash. No one's watching. No one is watching the TV screen. No one's watching the laptop. This goes on for a couple seconds. I wait for it. No one's, no one's looking. <laughs> 
so I had to save Smash Brothers. <laughs> Saves, wow, Drew, wow. And I, I point my finger up in the air That's to bad. the heavens, and I go, everyone! And they all look at me, and they think I'm a crazy sex pervert. I'm like, yes, true, but also, wait! <laughs> Look, Joker's in Smash, and the whole building erupts. <laughs> and uh, and that was the day that I, I saved the the Christmas that the Grinch stole. I saved it. <laughs> I saved Christmas. Oh, uh, it was cold that night. It was very cold. It was funny because I thought that you had. Because I also did a midnight release. At a separate store. Yeah. yeah, I thought we did the same store, but no, we didn't. But, um... There I, were two in the same city. <laughs> yeah. I had waited it just inside of Five Guys. They were kind enough to let me stay in there till closing time. <coughs> and then I went to the GameStop. They were cool to let me in. And no Five one... Five Guys. Jokers in, guys! <laughs> um, but it was like... No one knew. And it wasn't until you, we, uh, we picked you up that you were just like, something amazing happened. And I was just like, what happened? And then you tell me that story and I'm just like, oh, I don't know who that is. It's Joker from DC Comics. Yeah, really. I was like, what? What a, what a great first pick. The Completely first out pick of the for blue. the DLC is completely unexpected this weird JRPG series you never thought would be represented in Smash. It's for the most part, I don't want to hear about Persona Q and Persona Q2 on 3DS. Shut the fuck up. Persona mostly being a, a Sony exclusive franchise. I already said it. Don't, don't stop saying it. <coughs> so it's like, wow, this is really cool. And it's also not like, like Persona 5 blew up. Like it, it was really big, easily the biggest game in the series. But like, no one was like. Needs I'm not to be gonna say Smash. A lot of people want Joker and Smash, but no one was like, "Oh, dude, it's gonna happen!" Yeah. You know. So perfect. Totally and of course, out of blue. what game better to represent a, a total stealing of hearts and a surprise than the game with the Phantom Thieves? You know, it's just yep. it's really perfect. Moi, chef's kiss. It's perfect. And it, we got the ball rolling with the DLC. Second character, Dragon Quest. Which one? Four of them. Shut up. You get four of them. Third character, Banjo and Kazooie. Microsoft is kind of okay this time. Fourth character, Terry from a legendary old arcade series fighting games. We're doing it. Fifth time at... Too many sword fighters are there. Yeah. Yeah, they said that in the in the trailer. It didn't help. I <laughs> listen, I, I only <laughs> I, my only problem with Fire Emblem being so constantly represented. And I really don't have a problem if they were different enough. They all feel a lot the same to me. Violet's different, I won't lie. But it didn't excite me to get another person that was just like, uh. I think the thing is is that um like the first half ish of Fire Emblem characters are mostly the same, so it's you know, <clears throat> Mars, Roy, Lucina, and Krom are all based around Mars moveset at their core. So in order, you get in melee two Marts, and then brawl you get a new one, and then in Smash Four you get a Marth and a new one, and then a new one in the DLC. But people wanted other characters for DLC, and then in Ultimate Space Game you get another Marth, and then in the DLC, after four brand new IPs that were never even represented in Smash Up 4, I think people had the idea that like, oh, it's not even gonna be like from an existing series like Kirby or Mario, it's gonna be like another brand new series, probably third party. Yeah, because that, that was get, the thing too. We had gotten mostly yeah, brand new series. For the DLC at least, yeah, yeah, they were all completely new. This one was kinda like just And like, then it's not just Nintendo, not just Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem that had just come out when Smash has a penchant for shilling for upcoming Fire Emblem. You know? So it was just it, it's like the November direct. Violet's not a bad character at all. Bad timing. And does timing really matter? 
okay, no, not really. Developer side, no. But <clears throat> it makes a difference. Yes. It really does. It's, it's just kind of unfortunate. It, well, it doesn't help that Violet has a multi-weapon moveset that would have played a lot like Monster Hunter, who just strangely never happened. Can, can I can I use a wrestling analogy here? No, you're not allowed. So there's this thing where it's like, let's say you have a wrestler. He's brand new. No one really has. To, he's been built up. Yeah, he's been hyped. Finally, he like kind of like the game. He's been built up, hyped. You've heard all this stuff about him. You've seen him perform a little bit, but you've never actually seen him in a match. Comes out, he's got amazing matches. He's the best guy ever. And tell you what, he wins a title. Guess what? Even if he loses it, he wins another title. He wins another title. And he still puts on good matches every time. But one day, he just gets squashed in under a minute. It damages his credibility as well as his momentum forever not only forever but like people always have that in the back of their heads that was really what it was for smash with me where it's like you had this amazing streak and you thought okay this is going to be good the developers probably thought this is good timing this is good this this is good this i'm not saying it's their fault it's just that it wasn't it, it, it was a negative impact that they probably should have took taken a bit more time to look at the community before consulting being like maybe wait a month or something yeah just or i don't know just because they treat it as this big thing where it's like because i think that was the first one where he actually did announce like hey a new fighter is coming and i have my own direct coming to announce it oh no 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 that was the case since joker no, but what, what what I'm saying is like it was a complete mystery. Like like he was letting us be built up. Like we were always thinking for the next direct, like oh who's gonna get announced? But we didn't know an exact day of when to expect. Oh hype. yeah. We didn't have exact expectations of like oh man let's hey everybody let's call off to make sure we can all watch. Right. This. Oh yeah, and that and like it wasn't like. The other four were there announced before the Mr. Sakurai presents. I yes. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So it was like really a double whammy of like, not only is this revealed, but now I have to sit here because I I took time to yeah. sit here. Quote and unquote have to, but you, you know. You know, you're bored when anyway. You're, and you're, yeah, when you're a big fan, yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're dedicated. You're trying to be loyal to the whole thing. And you're just like, man, I, I remember just sitting there and just being like, okay, I... And I swung and missed. I I want to point out something that you didn't mention. Uh, before Byleth was announced, in between the time of Terry and Byleth, they announced that we were getting a new fighter pass with six more characters. Yes. After the fifth character, we'd get six more. <clears throat> but <clears throat> with everything we talked about, even though everyone knew that, it didn't seem to make a difference. No. It was more just kind of based on the principle of like, well, what if there wasn't a second fighter's pass? Then this is what we were going to end on, which like is not really a point, but you know. I think it's also because our expectations were so high because of what we had been given thus far. Yeah, like, which is holy shit. Like, listen, some American audience might not like the second one, but good for Japan. They love it. <clears throat> America absolutely loved the third one. Yeah, you got the double whammy there. Yeah, and it's like, okay, if they don't like this, they'll definitely like this. You got, you you got, got Terry. The... Terry from a fucking game franchise. And obviously it's a fighting game. Who doesn't right. want to have a fighting character? You got character? a weird semi-Sony exclusive what the fuck pick. You got big Japan. You got big America. And you got the representative for fighting game heads. Wasn't he also a big... Because uh, that... King of Fighters and uh, I forget what it was original. Fatal, Fatal Fury. Fury was originally bigger in uh, South America. Was South it? America too. Yeah, yeah, it was originally bigger there. So it's kind of like everyone was getting a slice of the pie, and then it's like, yeah, Byleth. Well, well, Byleth was big in Australia. You understand? Sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> he should be way down under. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even setting that. <laughs> um, but it was, it was just, it was just kind of like a whammy where you're just like, okay, and it's, I'm not super into it. It's crazy too because not to say that 
Nintendo characters are never going to be hype, but compared to Joker and Terry, and like, Banjo. yeah, and then we get, Just yeah, guys, and then we're getting Diddy Kong, and then we're getting Paper Mario. We're getting Dixie Kong now. Are you That's happy? Right. Yeah. It's Diddy Kong with long hair. He <laughs> he. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I listen, I'll foam at the mouth for Dixie Kong, but like, it's not. It's not. It, it's not. Dragon Quest a million. <laughs> I think it's the thing of like when you look at the fighters pass as a whole, a lot of people would say, Yeah, just buy the characters, buy the first four of that pack individually, don't bother getting the fighters pass. Because <laughs> uh, people who really hate Fire Emblem would say that. There, this, there's a reason that up. Sakurai, when he announced the fighters pass, went, Hey, uh, I, you should like, really consider. Uh, being careful before you just buy the fighter staff. Maybe just hold out a little bit, wait until, like, you know. He, it, well, he, what he really said was, like, because, we hope you have faith in us. Like, yes. have to have faith in our development team. But he, he made sure to stress that Nintendo gave me a list of fighters, and I just had to choose the most realizable ones. But I'm sure there were a few that Nintendo, like, really pushed for, especially, particularly. Violet, because Violet came out around the time of Three Houses, you know? Yeah. And, um... Yeah, and it then, was just very unfortunate timing, and... and that, Yeah, that and... you I don't want to say rumors, but, you know, who are all the characters everyone's talking about around this time? However likely you think they are, however hype you might think they are, they're nothing like Violet. You're hearing about Crash and Dante and Doom Guy and Dr. Eggman. I think the saddest thing was that the most hype thing in the whole Byleth reveal thing was... The Cuphead me costume. And me costumes aren't even good, and somehow those trailers drum up hype anyway. Sans was yeah. there for Terry, too. Exactly. So it's like, oh man, we're getting another, like, Sans costume. Yeah. You know? Um, it's really interesting to me that... The, the next character after Byleth was another Nintendo character, and they they kind of just... I don't know how I'd say this. Uh, I don't want to say gave up or like threw us a bone. So, do you remember this? Hmm. They said, hey guys, we're going to announce the next Smash character soon. They're from ARMS. You figure it out. You figure out which of the 15 it's going to be. Which was just really like... They Weird. They didn't do that for anything else. They never said, like, oh, the next one's Final Fantasy, oh, the next one's Xenoblade. They never did that for anyone else. So now, weird. it kind of makes sense because ARMS doesn't have a main character. Spring Man's the face, but he's not like, oh, I'm the protagonist of this big event. They're all, the, like, equal. The problem also with that game is that it didn't drum up a lot of, like, money or hype, and because what they it's did with it. Is fuck. <laughs> What they did with it also to promote the game was, hey, along with this arms fighter, you can play a demo of, or you can play the game for a couple. Oh yeah, like, like a NSO, window. yeah. Yeah. As in, please, we want to sell more than a million copies, please. Yeah, and please it's like- Please play this 2017 game, please. Um, no, no one. And I'm not even complaining. I like Min Min as a character. I love the whole yeah. reveal trailer. I think it was really good. And I'm, it's cool that they picked Min Min too because multiple times they held tournaments in ARMS. Not that anyone would know this because we played that dick ass game. <laughs> but multiple times they would have like, oh, this character versus this character, popularity contest. Play as this character in online matches and they'll win and they'll like move on. And eventually we're going to find out who the most popular of our 15 characters are. And it was Min Min. So yeah, it feels kind of right. Yeah. That she's the one. I I don't know if they held that contest specifically for Smash. I don't think they. Did. I I mean maybe it helped, but yeah. Probably definitely helped. Um, make a decision on it. But it's uh it's really it's really cool that uh you know Min Min by the time that they showed off the Mr. Sakurai presents and Min Min was released, uh, COVID had hit, and by and pure we coincidence. Min Min is the most diseased fighter in the game. And she even fucking beat Sakurai. Yeah, try social distancing against my arms the length of Battlefield. Yeah, social distance now! I, I do want to point out something where it's like... Uh, I hate the fucking character. I think we got Byleth on the 17th of January. Something like that. 
cut to about four or five months later, we get Min Min. Yeah, it was the longest stretch. It was a longer stretch by one or two months than any other we had seen up to that point. And then our probably our second longest stretch, which was Min Min to uh, to Steve to Steve. Right, because it was from like May or June to October. I want to say it was June. June when we got Min Min. So it's like. July, August, September, November, and it's like three months was was a lot for us because we were just like, and all for when's it gonna fuck it? And it did. They did the same thing again because they were like, Mr. Sakurai's gonna announce a character. Who's it gonna be? Right, but at least they didn't say, Hey guys, it's from blah blah blah. Yeah. I, then again, I am kind of glad they did it for Arms because that game's dog shit. It's it's so per it's so perfect. It's 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 like pottery. It's I, fine like pottery that ARMS is so boring to play and even more boring to watch, and Min Min is the exact same way. Can I can I just say really quick, have you ever actually played a demo of that game? Yes. Okay, you have, because it's it's hard to figure what out. What if how boxing the menus... was longer in terms of distance and time? Yeah, it's like it's not no, no part about it is simple to just set up. Where you're just like, hey, I want to go to this path. Oh, well, choose your substitute arms and choose your third substitute arms and for each hand and then go into the battle. And then it's like, OK, I'm tired now. It sucks because it's it's a fine concept. They, but it just they tried making Splatoon again. They they picked a genre they don't usually dabble in. Kind of a fighting game, I guess. It's, it's, well, it's a 3D you know, fighting game. Yeah, it's, it's boxing, but. The characters can do a little more than just punch left and right. Well, also, it was better. meant to promote the Switch's functionality with twisting with the, the arms. And, yeah. So um, I can see where they were kind of thinking, like, hey, this is going to be a promotion for our new console. Right. It's just unfortunate because arms. Look, I can clown on the game all day and all night, and I will continue to, but it's, it's sad because everything about arms is awesome except for playing the game yeah. but it, it's extra bad because it's even more boring to watch the game which is the worst thing you can say about a fighting game in particular yeah those things they they want people to play at tournaments for like cash prizes and to drum up hype people worst thing you can say about a fighting game. people love things like street fighter like tekken street like fighter smash and bros tekken, smash where it's just like it's you watch bros. it and you're just but not like you're in awe yeah and then with with arms you, you just don't feel it all the character all the flavor is there the art style the music the theming just it's the all there is all except off. unfortunately the the core conceit of the game because boxing but it takes longer it's just it's just not work. a fun concept nope um but then we move on to the one and only. <laughs> the one everybody's been waiting for. Uh, well, so Steve was a character that people no, you have can been end talking it there. about since the... Steve was a character. You can end it there. No, after <laughs> Min Min? That's true. How, That's did we, true. how did we get the best character in the game after the worst character in the game? How does that happen? You know what I will say about Steve is I had zero expectations. And this time it happened. Yeah. Um, because because when you think of Minecraft, you always think, oh, game for kids. You know, biggest, easily the most ludicrous selling game on the face of God's Green Earth, and it's just fucking insane. <laughs> but, like, at the same time, when you... When you uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of the right words to say. I've heard a lot of people say the same thing, where they're like... It shouldn't have made sense to put Steve in, but it absolutely makes sense. Because A, it's a win for all companies. B, it's a win financially for just having... Because you got to remember when Smash came out, everyone knew who Mario was. Everyone knew who all these Nintendo people were. But now those are kind of like the older icons. Yeah. Who's the newer icons? Steve. 
Smash, everybody knows Minecraft. It's like... Everybody knows. No one, there's not a single soul who can't look at a fucking pickaxe from Minecraft and then say, oh, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah no, no one goes, knows. oh, is that from that, like, uh, Dead or Alive game? Yeah, it's like, no, <laughs> no, that does not happen. It's right. not like all those shooter games where people are like, is that from the Halo or the Call of Duty? It's like, no, 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 no. Everyone knows Minecraft. Yeah. Everybody. So it's like, it's immediate exposure. It's immediately a good... Plus, his, his one stage is like fucking seven. And fucking his, his, his like, uh, his alts are so many things. Yeah, there's two for Steve, two for Alex. Plus, and, I'm, cl I'm glad we have a zombie. Yes, yeah, zombie and Enderman, which is great. Yeah. They, obviously, Enderman's not super tall, but it's it's so cool. It, it When I when I first saw it, I was kind of like, oh my gosh. But then once I really watched the direct, I was like, you know what? Like it, I it all actually kind of like this. Yeah. I actually like this because it's not like Violet where you're just like, Okay, I know this series, I know this and that. It's like, you, you kind of felt that bit of unease where you're like, I don't know, but then you're like... Yeah, like, how is this going to work? But then, like, once it all clicked into place, you're like, yeah. you know what, it's perfect. It works. The thing with the idea of a Minecraft character is th there have been talk... You know, people have talked and... We've been talking for hours. On and off, but still nonetheless. Still. Uh, Ever since, like, the Wii U days, like, before Smash 4 even released, people had talked about, what about a Minecraft character? Yep. And I think... Well, there's two reasons that some people would instantly go no. One was, oh, Minecraft is like a kid's game, and it's just for stupid dumb babies, and it's just popular YouTuber bait. And I think that's a really dumb opinion to have. Yes, that's the stereotype, and it is reinforced by things that are true, but that's... To act that's like very, that's, that's all that's, Minecraft is, that's so superficial. Yeah, that's very surface that it's, level. It's just Baby's first Let's Play channel and Yogg's cast. No, that's what blew <laughs> you know? up. That's what blew up right. for those channels, but it's like, no, it's yeah. what really happened was it's a, this game was super creative and everybody was into it. Right. It's the reason that little it, kids and YouTubers were into Minecraft was because Minecraft was the big new thing and it, it really i think deserved all of the the respect it garnered minecraft i think is the only game that i've seen really since to get what i what i like to call the katamari treatment where it came out it was cheap it was instantly beloved and no one can really like stop that momentum yeah because it just keeps going and going and going katamari has its fans but it's kind of had its burnout after like so many different games over the season you can't do too much with it yeah. With a game like Minecraft, you can keep that shit going on you forever. And so it's like, it, it was just perfect in the way where it just kept building fans. And it still builds fans to this day. The day that we get, and I think it's inevitable, I don't know when they'll do it. The day we get Minecraft 2, <laughs> the, the world enters the ether. Yeah. Our, our souls will leave our bodies. <laughs> I remember when... Now with uh, hexagons. <laughs> now with hexagons. <laughs> Six sides. The future is no longer cube. And it's just crazy because it's such a simple concept, but it works so well. And um, then you're gonna move on to we came. I'm gonna I'm gonna preface it with something. Well, there's there's one thing I want to say. Okay. It's the other reason that people would instantly say no to a Minecraft character with like Steve is. How would they work? What, you're actually yeah. going to be able to mine and build? That's like half the point of Minecraft. They'd just be like a stiff, slow, boring sword fighter with really shitty animations. Because, and that that was kind of the obvious answer, right? It's like, yeah, they wouldn't be able to mine materials and build blocks, because that'd be way too impossible to implement. And, uh... Well, that's exactly what we got. And not only that, but Sakurai even fully admitted every stage had to be modified to accommodate every Steve. Single, which yeah. must be an absolute nightmare. I think it does help that they had been talking with Mo Yang and Microsoft about oh, I'm Minecraft sure. and Smash. I think they said for like five years. So like around like 2013, I think, is when negotiations were starting. And, you know, maybe they went on and off, not constant. But yeah. 
that the idea was in the back of Sakurai's head for all those years, I think, you know, sometimes you just have to chew on an idea, maybe even for multiple years, before it clicks. Of course. With that said, what a, what a lad. <laughs> what a madman. Imagine, imagine Sakurai is the head of the game that you're working on, and you're just a programmer. And your supervisor <laughs> busts into the room. Hey guys, guess what Sakurai wants you to do? Go over every single stage in the game and code for gold and iron and, and diamonds and, and redstone. It's it's great, <laughs> so great. Imagine being that guy. Like, oh, I'm so honored, and this is gonna. Fucking or <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to see my wife. <laughs> and you know what? Worth. <laughs> Worth. <laughs> uh. Okay, now we can move on to I cried and also King. I like to preface this by just saying, "Welcome to the Game Awards, where it all begins again." Oh, wait! Oh, right! <laughs> this character's first! I forgot about that. Bro. <laughs> I was at work. Do you have a story for this? I, I'll, let you, I'll let you go first. I was at work. I couldn't get the day off, but the game works are there. And I'm not expecting Smash to be there, but I'm just like, oh, I wonder like who's going to win. Maybe it's Red Dead 2 or whatever, right? I'm not expecting Nintendo to show anything, much less Smash. Because Steve was just two months ago. Like, come on, let's, let's take a break. We'll get something like February. Uh, and the cinematic plays, and I see Smash characters on that cliff, roll the light, I'm like, oh, are we getting, like, a World of Light expansion? And we see Galeen, I'm eating pizza with my coworker, and right as my, my mouth is full of just shitty Little Caesars pizza, <laughs> oh my god, who can slice Galeen in half? I can't think of anyone. I, I, I went into a seizure. I was screaming, I was foaming at the mouth, I was like Gmod clicking up in my chair, ragdolling. And my coworker's just staring at me, like she barely even plays video, and she's like, Drew, would you shut the fuck up? And you said, I can't, I can't. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. It's just what are you talking about? Are you fucking hot? Oh my god! <laughs> Man, that was hot. I. I had no intention of watching the Game Awards. So because I turned why it would off. you ever? So I, but, I, but I remember it was on. I remember seeing something on Twitter about. I got like a notification like, hey, a Smash thing. I was like, oh, okay. I turned it on and I'm like. I'm just like messing around with something in front of me, and I see the Smash and I'm like, okay, I might as well watch. And I, gosh, I wish I recorded myself. Because this was my literal reaction when it's like, I was like, Trunks? For Dragon Ball Z? What? And then I, can I just preface this by saying, I, I've always been very curious about Final Fantasy VII, and I never really played it. And I, I heard about the time because this is about the time when the when FF7 remake came out. Yeah. I had been seeing videos about it and I had watched a bit of gameplay so I knew who Sephiroth was. Yeah. I had literally just fucking learned. And then I hear the song and I hear Dum, 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 dum. And my fucking organ shook. I was like, ah, 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 ah. and I was like, you gotta be kidding me! For one, it's like Square Enix already has Cloud and four Dragon Quest heroes. Yes. There's no way we can get any more Square Enix, right? Oh, we do. But it's also Sephiroth is the RPG antagonist of all time. Yep. He's number one. No one comes even close. And I know a lot of people who are very small-brained who say, Ugh, another anime sword fighter. He's the! It. He is the. That was the. everyone's argument. He is the, the anime, anime sword, sword fighter. fighter. Yes! And it's like, <laughs> that statement could never be more true. Clearly you were not around 20 years ago when the game came out. We Clearly even... you were not... 
around 10 years ago on YouTube for all the Advent Children AMVs. Every time, every <laughs> fucking time, when I heard people say, just an anime star fire, I was immediately like, you just fucking don't get it. You just don't fucking get it. And then, I, j just skipping a bit ahead, <laughs> actually, no, let's, let's stay on this for a bit. When you watched his trailer, and he, uh, into, you know, one of the biggest staples of Nintendo ever, what was your immediate reaction? I can't believe Mario is fucking dead. <laughs> Do you know what that scene actually was? It's that's a reference to having children, yeah? Yeah, he, he stabs Cloud in the shoulder. He doesn't yeah. kill him, but he, like, raises him on the sword and everything. So when I saw it, I was like, he just fucking stabs Mario! I didn't think he was dead, but I was like... The just... fake-out is so good, too. And then I didn't even... It took me five times of rewatching before I realized when... He turns to keep fighting Cloud, and then he swings his he sword. Swings Mario off. flies off the fucking sword. <laughs> it was perfect. You can't get better than that, and they still did. It was fucking. Oh my gosh. And then, and then. Well, before we move on to that, yeah. Really quick, I just want to say in the. Uh, I'm glad they gave Sephiroth kind of special treatment. A, his... his He's class. shirtless! <laughs> That's the show treatment, but also... He, his classic mode is literally a boss rush. Oh, yeah! And he literally... got the boss treatment. He got the boss treatment. And he... Because yep. that was how... Sakurai knew he was like, listen, this character isn't just... the character. He's the guy. Like, yeah. a lot of people are gonna freak out. And a lot of people did. And it was just... It, I just love that he got that treatment because he's such a big person. If he was the only one announced for the rest of it, I might have just been happy. I um, might have just been like, you know what, that was amazing. As a quick aside, there... You, you could say, at least, that Sephiroth having a boss fight that let you play as him early... And the only DLC character ever to have a boss fight could lend credence to something we already know would have been true. Um, in in a world where Sakurai wasn't sure if he was going to be able to get Sora, Sephiroth would have been the last character Probably for, for the entire game. Yeah. And if that, that is that definitely some true, the then one. yeah, the last one, hey, here's a boss fight. You know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But I think it, it, moving on to Sora later, but yeah. um, yeah, then we then we reach the the second apex, which wow, what a what a what a three characters in a row. Because we both right, we both saw Smash Ultimate get announced, and then everyone kept saying Rex and Pyra and Mithra, and we were like, who is that? And then we played Xenoblade Two, and we were like, wow, oh, this game's pretty fucking good. You know what it was? It was it was like. Because we, I talked about Byleth and saying that wrestler, he he lost so dramatically, and it was still an, such an impact on him. Min Min, man, it's kind of like the tough days of getting back out there. Mm -hmm. And Steve is like, holy shit, he got a big win. We didn't expect it, but he got one. He got one over, and he got a big win. Sephiroth, oh my god, he's the world champion. Then this. <laughs> and then you get the character that you thought would never happen. I literally thought it was just a like a different another like expansion to the game. Yeah. Cuz I I didn't see the thing at the bottom at the beginning. Yeah, that's fair. And it that that's honestly kind of a weak trailer because the intro just goes on for so long. It's yeah, it does go on Pyra? for so long. I can't that's find the thing. Pyra. That's another thing. I'm like, "Oh, is this like a quest where you have to rely on like yeah, lesser blades like, or like her?" He really didn't seem like a Smash thing. Yeah, the longer it goes, the longer you think this clearly isn't a Smash trailer because no Smash trailer would be as boring as this. And then it just, like, you see it, you see Final Destination. And you're just, and she's just like, I'm sorry, Rex. I got an invite, and it's just like. <laughs> and you're not invited. <laughs> Get house planted. <laughs> Me, your no, wife, that would imply and your that... other wife are leaving for Smash, where we will get fucked. And we will fuck. And you are not invited. And we will fuck them up. Yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah, that too. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, Pyra's a fucking... Pyra comes in with a baseball bat and says, listen up, fuckers. And Mithra's like, yeah. And then she runs around the room in a perfect fucking two seconds of... Two seconds... I don't know, fuck. But she's so fast. But, God. She fits, but boy. Uh, let's talk about how for Smash, Mithra had to be censored with uh, some additional clothing accessories, and then they added that costume into Xenoid 2 because it was objectively hotter than base Mithra. J peak ESRB. ESRB <clears throat> winning the game twice in a row. Just mwah. love it. I like that too, because I, I think it was called Massive Melee Mithra. And, <laughs> Great. And it objectively made Mithra a blade you can't put away because it, it like increased her moves at that's that. Mithra's third massive thing <laughs> <laughs> but fucking I, w I was so happy when that happened I remember where I was with that one I had <laughs> do you have a story about that? no I was just at home and then I called you and I was nearly crying I was crying because that was the character I wanted. Yeah. And I was like, it's not happening. Once I saw yeah, Rex, I was like, it's we, not happening. We genoed ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, because I, I remembered, I was like, oh man, it's at four o'clock. I usually, or like, I think it was like four, three, five, maybe something. Yeah. But it was at a weird time where I was like, oh man, I'm going to be having dinner then. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take my food and eat downstairs. And I saw the beginning of the trailer and I said, oh my gosh, Xenoblade 2, what's this? And I took a plate of spaghetti down, and I started eating, I was like, is this like an expansion pass? And I remember... I remember the second I saw Final Destination, the fork dropped. And I was like... <laughs> like, I, I had that <laughs> fucking moment where I just skittered for a second. I was like, no, no, it can't be. And it just fucking happened. And I was so happy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And then we move on to Sega's got multiple characters, kind of. And then we move on to Square Hey, Enix that's a little hot characters. down there. Oh, that's really hot down there. Um, that's fucking hot down there. You shouldn't put things in there. Why are you carrying that dead body? Oh. I thought you were gonna keep saying it's really hot down there, and I thought this was the sequel to Tooth Protagonist. <laughs> I got I just got a pit in my stomach. I I was scared. I'm sorry. That's okay. But still don't know what he meant by that. No, two's for I know oh. you're talking about the trailer with the volcano. What do you mean? I told you a few times. Still doesn't make sense. I meant to say toothpaste protagonist. Yeah, you did. You did mean that. You meant a lot of things. So Kazuya, Namco Bandai finally gets a second rep, and it's their premier fighting game thing. I wasn't hyped for Kazuya because. Oh I really? Don't... We have a reaction that says literally where you're like, hey Hachi! Kazuya! <laughs> okay, <laughs> now the reason for that is not because, dude, Hey Hachi would have been more exciting. I know, I know. It's because Hey Hachi got a me costume in Smash 4. Yes. And then in an interview, Sakurai said, yeah, we were thinking about Hey Hachi. It was the only Tekken character that he had ever mentioned up to that point. And there was also a thing where, like, you know, Inkling had a me costume, Inkling became a character. Yeah. K. Roll became a character. And the Hey Hachi costume did not come yet so we were always thinking it's a possibility right mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah there's multiple main characters in Tekken you know I think that was if it wasn't that one it might have been a previous one but it was that where we got the Shantae and Dante me fighter costumes the... I think it was during his presentation yes I think so yeah and we also got like a Shantae, Dante, Doom Guy, and no, Doom Guy was Doom Guy was Sora. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that one because he was the only big mention from that. But um, there was also I don't know what they called him, Altair. Oh, Altair, yeah. I don't know. I think he's from Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed. I never yeah. played that specific one, but. Then I think there was a... Uh, oh, and uh, Vault Boy. Vault Boy was a previous one, but there was a, there was a knight one. <clears throat> a knight's armor one. What was his name? Arnold? I don't fucking know. Arthur. That's it. Oh, yeah, Arthur, Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, that was the one where they that <clears throat> was in. And uh, 
Yeah, it was... I, I wasn't as hyped, but I know fighting game fans were hyped. I just, I don't think the fighting game characters control well because they all have the option to input yeah. uh, special fighting game inputs. And they reward you for doing that, which right. means you're obviously going to be at a kind of a disadvantage against which fighting Which is fine. Fans. I'm fine with people more familiar with fighting games getting the advantage for those characters. I think that's cool because it, it doesn't mean that you don't have to use those inputs mm -hmm. to be good with those characters. It's not like you're going to get cloned on, but even with Terry, who I think was the best implemented of all four, there's always something. Yeah. It just the, the way Smash's controls work with the analog stick and just the two simple inputs and the C stick, they don't mesh as well as they should. I remember when Terry came out, I did because I watched that whole yeah. Terry direct, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna actually try it. I and I did do it successfully. Of them, Terry's the easiest to pick up and play. I was, I was doing it successfully, but I, I was definitely thinking this is a bit more tedious. Right. But also, Terry's a little more complex in that he's the only character with a back special, which can be a little weird sometimes. Yeah. But then you get into, well, what makes Tekken different from other fighting games? Well, rather than each character having, like, 20 or 30 moves, each character has like 80 moves. Yeah. And they did it! <laughs> Somehow. There are how. multiple moves where you can't just go like, oh, this is my forward air. Oh, this is my down smash. Oh, this is my neutral smash. And not only that, but they also have dramatic camera cuts for one on one combat. Oh, yeah. For yeah, Kazuma, like which, that. which is good, but it's also kind of disorienting when you're. Yeah. Where with every other stage and character, you play exactly the same. Yeah. So. I. I I want like the it, but it's game like characters to come back, but I, it'll be controversial if it happens. But I hope they get a little more normalized, because to me the whole point of Smash, well, not the whole point, but part of the appeal is that it doesn't control like a fighting game. So now you have this character where I'm not even trying to do these fighting game inputs, but because I'm moving the control stick around so much in a platform fighter and not a standard fighter. Of course I'm going to be doing accidental shit every five seconds. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's I'll just go back looser. to Samus now. Do you, but, do you have anything else to say on Kazuya? Uh, no, besides, cool. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely not opposed, but um, I wanted to kind of open with... As the final fire of the DLC. Who else could it have been? Who simple... Else? And clean. and clean. And it's a miracle that he made it. I'm not in favor. I never played those games. I didn't really care, but you know how I, I described uh, basically the Smash DLC being kind of like a wrestler's career? Yeah. This was the Hall of Fame. Yep. The career moment where you're just like, what else can he do? He did it. He's up there. And that's really what, what else can you say about Sakurai? You got through to fucking Disney. You went through shitloads of who knows what. And came out fucking Sora. But then there's the twist. There's the M. Night Shyamalan twist of the interviews that come out after after Sora's revealed. Do you know about this? Hmm. Do you know what the punchline is? Hmm. Sakurai, in describing the process to get Sora, said... Oh yeah, Disney actually was just like game for it. They were like, yeah, let's do it, dude. I wouldn't doubt. Like, yeah, I'm sure going through the rights was still a nightmare, but like, at least you weren't like having to negotiate, right? Like, you weren't begging for approval. Disney, yeah. Disney out the gate said, oh yeah, let's do it. Whatever. Yeah, yeah you can be Smash. No, I'm just it saying was, like as a nightmare, just like, gone. It was the director of Kingdom Hearts that was iffy about putting Sora in Smash. And do you know, you want to guess why? Hmm. Because he worried about the canonical implications, <laughs> which sounds dumb until you remember that Kingdom Hearts is about crossovers. And yeah. now we're putting Sora in, in a the crossover biggest crossover with besides Cloud and Sephiroth, no overlap whatsoever. So now it's brand new territory with Metal Gear and Kirby and Animal Crossing and, and Fatal Fury and Pac-Man. It's like, you know, people clowned on him for saying that's why he was iffy about putting Sword in Smash. I, that's I like the one kind of game where it makes sense 
to worry worry about the lore. (laughs) It's definitely murky territory, but I think people would be willing to forgive it. They had to make sure that Kirby didn't wield the Keyblade. He can't be a canonical Keyblade wielder. He gets a toy Keyblade. With all that said, I thought for sure that if Sora were to ever get in, they would replace the Mickey Mouse key, you know, the the chain thing, with the Smash logo. There you go, brand new keyboard. Because that's the obvious thing to do, right? Nope. Nintendo handed over a nice $10 million bill. (laughs) Got Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. Just any kind of Mickey Mouse at all. Imagery. Fucking Smash. Dude. What? (laughs) <laughs> that can't be understated. It can't be. It's like you were able to fucking rock that. And it, I think it's the perfect cap. The perfect cap to a game that just kept on giving. Yeah. The the ultimate game of you're never ever is actually happening ever. And it's happening right now. Sora. Mm-hmm. I think honestly, even Sephiroth would have been a fitting ending, but it wouldn't have been the same. No, it wouldn't, it have been wouldn't have been. Here's the thing: it would have been hype. I would have totally been into it. Yeah. It would have definitely gone down much quicker. Yeah. This is a lot more like I accept it. Yeah. Like, because a lot of people would have been like, "Oh man, yeah, Sephiroth's cool, but what about this guy?" No one can fucking say. What about Sora? Like, who, Sora. who comes after Sora? That's it. You know. Yeah. It's for like, this game, at least. And then you know. Yeah, for this game, it's it's just the perfect cap off, cap off, and you're just like, what else could we have done? Of all the character inclusions in Smash, from like Cloud to Ridley to Sonic, Sora truly is the. Where do we go from here? That's true. That's <laughs> very know? true. Like the king of crossovers, not Ryu, the other one. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is it. Square Enix finally relented. Um, Ultimate has a, just a lot of nice... Um, it's one of the most balanced games I've ever seen. Yes, for having... 89 characters. It's fucking insane. 89 characters. And uh, Gandorf and Kirby are still pretty garbo. But... They're not, they're not like melee Kirby bad. They're not brawl Ganondorf bad. They're, they're fine. They're manageable. It's you can just, still I wish win they were designed differently, but you, you can win just fine. Yeah. They're not fundamentally broken. No. They're just not that designed that well, but they work. Um, but there's a lot of nice, I can't, I keep losing the words for it. Um, <sighs> nice little tweaks to the Smash formula. A lot of nice little touches that really make the game feel more complete and accommodating uh, that you can make uh, and save rule sets. I yes. think it's like the... Honestly, it's the big one. Because I, I remember just Having to always make quality the rules of is, life. That's what I'm talking about. Quality, quality of, of okay. life. Okay. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Changes. Yeah, that's and the big one for me. It's such a big thing. I I think um, maybe not bigger than that. Second biggest for me was the the final Smash meter. Because I I kind of never liked the Smash Fall concept. I always was like, listen, why not just save build it up like it's super in any other fucking game? Yeah. And it's like. When they say, oh, you release a weaker Smash, like, it still feels pretty fucking strong. Bro, if you're Zelda or Lucas, it's still over. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you're winning. And that's that's what I like about it, where it's just like, yeah, it may not be, like, instant death, but it's, yeah, it, it just make it an it. option. Just yeah. make it, because you design the animation, why do I have to fight a fucking Smash Ball for it? Yeah. Just make it available, and they did, and it's just fucking great. Um, they add battlefield forms, and a hazard toggle. I I do have two issues with Hazard Toggle, and I don't want to sound greedy when I say this. I think these are legitimately things they could add to the to future games. Mm-hmm. One, Hazard Toggle is just something you change in the rule set. So once you save the rule set, then you go to the stage list. And I wish you could just turn Hazards on or off on the stage list. That would have really helped competitive in particular, because 
Watching competitive is fun, but competitive players didn't want to go through the hassle of switching between movesets just to get access to like the two stages where they actually wanted hazards because they're not that intrusive. Yeah. The other thing is, it, I, it would be a lot of work, it would, but I think it's well within the realm of possibility. I don't think it's in a, a Herculean task. I would like to see individual hazard toggles. Maybe in, say, uh, let's, let's give an example. So like in Dr. Wily's castle, no devil. Yes, in Dr. Wily's castle, it sucks that no hazards gets rid of the, the platforms. Yeah. But of course I don't want yellow devil there. Yeah. Of course I don't. But He's just a platforms. gigantic pain. Perfect. I'm so glad you said that because... That's the big that's, one I always think of. That's the example on the hazard toggle menu is they show yellow devil. Yeah. Perfect exact. You're getting a fucking beautiful kiss on the great lips and a gold star on the fridge. Thank you. Man, no, but, you're not. But it's just Neither. like, <laughs> when I think of hazards, it's like, yeah, I, I don't mind having something, like, something that adds to the stage. Yeah. Where it's like a platform. A platform should be fine. Toggle it so you can decide. Right. Like, hey, I don't want enemies to invade. Like Yoshi Story, I want the cloud on the side of the stages, but I don't want the fly guys that drop healing items. I... I don't know if I'm going to say I think it'll happen, but... I think it could. Again, it's, it would take a lot of work, but it's not a Herculean task. It is. I think it's within the realm of possibility. Will we ever see it? Will we see it next game? Don't know. But I think that's my biggest hope for a quality of life change, mm -hmm. probably. Um, Squad Strike and Smashdown are not modes I often play, but when I do, I always have fun. It's never a coin toss about, am I going to enjoy this? It's always fun. Nice. Nice. Now, my crazy big hope for a different kind of mode, just for like basic versus matches stuff, is true tag team, where you can swap out at any time. Everyone is Pokemon Trader, bro. Oh yeah, you got Squirtle, Ivysaur, Charizard. Uh, let's see, I got uh, Ike, Pac-Man, and Cloud. <laughs> they, they, could, they could do that. A lot of fighting games have done it. Um, Just make it a special input and not, you know, down special, obviously. Yeah. You, you could make it work. Yeah, you could You could definitely figure that out, because it's not out of the ordinary. Yeah, man. Shield and some other button. Bro, if I could switch between Pyra and Mithra, I could switch between Wolf and Sephiroth, baby. Uh, I, get, I shudder thinking about that. I shudder thinking about the closest Smash we'll ever get to Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> I need it. I need it, Ryan. I didn't even have that on the list. That's just something I thought about right now. That's I've good. never thought about it. That's good, though. Oh, man. Um, what else is there? Uh... I only really have stuff about, like... Here, let me look. Like stuff Gino D confirmed for the second time. He's never happening. Stuff about, like, the next game, really. I, there are a few other things I want to talk about with Ultimate, but I think I can get through it pretty quick. Um, we already went over it, but Spirit's good. World of Light being Spirit's, again, just it's just like Spirit's wearing a, a shitty Halloween mask. Like, haha, can you guess who I am? It, lame. The whole, the gigantic labyrinthian map, and what do you get for besides Spirit's? Uh, boss battles. Yeah. Oh. Okay, except those bosses are also at the end of classic mode, so like it's, it's a like weird thing to else. it's a weird thing to try and figure out because what do you do? Yeah. When you have so many characters you have to implement and like I see what they're going for, but it's uh, It's just hard to nail down. For all of Subspace Emissary's flaws, I think at least that mode had higher highs because you had cutscenes. I'm not saying World of Light needed more cutscenes necessarily, but it's, it's the fucking. I'm at Denny's and I'm five, and okay, fine. Get to get the B to the end of the maze with your red crayon before your scrambled eggs get here. It's like, okay, I have no fucking idea where to go. <laughs> um, this game doesn't have any trophies. Spirits are used in place of it, and I would like to say the concession, you know, like, 
to meet halfway would be to give spirits descriptions. But then I remember that there's what at launch there was like ten, not ten thousand, a thousand spirits, and now post DLC, it's oh, there's like, more than a thousand. There's one thousand five hundred, something like that. Yeah. Um, adding even one sentence for each, like that's a lot. And then you remember this game is in like ten languages. That's you can't really meet halfway like that. So the answer is. Just suck it up. Less spirits with descriptions, or you go back to trophies and you get a lot less representation. And then do you lose the event matches? I I love trophies. We all do. But even if they never come back, I'll understand. As long as there's something like it there. I think spirits are enough, although they are just PNGs. Well, the thing about it, too, is that I don't mind... I, I never really minded it because what are trophies anyway? A nice little distraction. And like, what do you do with trophies anyway? It's like, for, for me, Spirits is like, okay, I'm trading a model for a PNG, but does that really matter? Like, to me, it's just kind of like, <clears throat> because that's another thing the game has to load, has to render, has to add, and for everything sure. like that. And so like, that's why I'm kind of like in the mood for Spirits where I'm just like, okay, yeah, give me all of them. Just throw anything at me because it's like, Whenever they have just another spirit battle lined up, I'm like, oh, how is this one gonna yeah. be faithful to it? And then you think of how many characters are involved, and you're like, well, I mean, I know characters aren't gonna these char- this amount of characters isn't gonna last two games, so we're definitely gonna get cut down on both spirits and yeah. other things. So it's definitely they might improve upon it. They might include, you know, some some a sentence of dialogue or like a paragraph or something. They might copy and paste one in. Who knows? I think part of the reason why it was a hard transition from trophies to spirits, even with the battles, was there is, and this this is just because of my generation, it's because we grew up on games with trophies, and part of that time of our lives was before the widespread use of the internet, and the internet being really fast and um, accessible, is there's something really nice, and I'm going to say the word, I, I mean it, don't clown on it. Hmm. This is legitimate usage of the word. Soulful. It's really soulful to see the game tell you who these people are so that you can start learning about them. Even though we live in a day and age where we have Wikipedia in our pockets, and yes, I can just look up who Numb Diddly is. But it's different when you understand that, wow, they put this in the game for us to learn, for us who don't know. And that, that feels extra special, especially when the replacement is, these aren't even 3D models. You know what I mean? I, I get it. But I understand that's not a completely logical way to think about things. You have to think about the world. Even if there were a third as many spirits, that's what, 500? That's a lot. You yeah. know? So I, I get it. I, I don't seethe and mauled about spirits as much as I used to. It's still weird. It's still weird. Porky doesn't really have a spirit. And that feels really weird. One, for the only antagonist shared between two mother games. And two, important enough to get a boss battle in a previous game. <laughs> really weird. They do have the second capsule he puts himself in. The, what's it called? The absolutely safe capsule. But you don't see Porky in it, because you can't see through it. It's just a, an opaque... I think that's the right word, right? Opaque? You, you can't see through it. Sphere. Yeah. It, the implication is Porky's inside, but if you've never played Mother 3, you don't know that. So you're just like, where's Porky? It's really weird. There's um. one or two weird exclusions like that, but... Largely, they did an excellent job. My only other complaint with things that weren't included were some me costumes got spirit events with them. Like, when we got the Cuphead DLC costume, we got Cuphead, Mugfan, the Devil, and King Dice. Really cool. They, that's going above and beyond, right? But I think any character that got a me costume with them, you should have gotten the spirit doesn't even have to be a battle. You don't have to get more from that franchise. But it's so weird. 
to think that Sans on Twitter got more engagements, a shitty me costume, got more engagements than any other Smash character in history. I think not even Sora got that high. Banjo didn't get that high. Everyone is here. Snake, nothing. Sans. No spirit. Okay. And then you get a spirit event for Ring Fit Adventure. It's like, oh. <laughs> oh he, he, there he is. I mean, Shantae was an, I, I think it's also just planning is difficult with these types of things where it's like you don't know what you're going to include. You don't know what you're going to make a spirit out of where it's like, yeah, what do you dedicate it's true It's not like to? all of this was planned before launch. Exactly. It's like, because Shantae was a spirit before she was ever a costume. In the game. Yeah. It's like, they sure, really maybe they probably spirit. planned that, but they were probably, probably like... Well, the game's coming out. We need a few more spirits to get in. It's like, do the Shantae one. Yeah. It, it's hard to know, so I, I'm willing to forgive them on that. And I'm, I'm especially sad that there never ended up being a spirit. Good! Ryan, <laughs> please play DMC2. It's best game! Please! Maybe. Sorry, I just need an excuse to do that voice. The, um... Oh, yeah. While we're on Sands, I'm going to forget to talk about it. That is cut content we can talk about. Hmm. Um, there is... I feel like I had to have told you about this at some point. Probably. Um, there is a cut animation for Sansa's eye flashing blue. And they just never included it. And that fucking sucks. Oh. Because they probably would have used it for... Do you know when every other character's eyes flash? No matter what? 100%. Nope. Oh, I uh... guess so. Parries. Yeah, parries. That was Dude! Cool. Oh, <laughs> I didn't go through with it. Sakurai's a hack fraud. <laughs> Such a fucking cuck. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. It's over, underbros. Underbros. Um, what do we have for cut content? For cut content predictions for the next game? What are you talking about? Oh, okay. cut content. You okay. Can- I'm sorry. I'm going to shut you down. You I have went to do it. I went too far. Every time I say cut content, you think content that will be cut in the future. That is never what I mean when I say I cut keep, content. I keep thinking differently. And that makes you tonight's biggest loser. <laughs> I really like that punchline. Um, <clears throat> oh, I don't have an on Let me go into my images. Um, because the, the characters in that, like, chart, that's really the only thing of, of, of no. no. Yeah, there's yeah. not any, like, oh, did you know they cut, uh, Paper Bowser <laughs> boss fight? Um, <clears throat> but a, a couple cool characters. Uh, Alucard. Oh, so Figured, close. yeah. I just He was a really detailed. Sent me the night before Smash came out. Oh, uh, sure. Uh. Uh, um, the Sidui. Uh, I can see it. Oh, and <clears throat> this last little. Hey, we found this in the code, and what the fuck does this mean? Because I, I just really like how weird this is. Joker has data. Just one line. Just one line out of all of his code. One line of code <clears throat> mentions a character called. Jane, not Joker, Jane, but within Joker's programming, and it refers to uh, ponytail hair physics, hmm. which implies that there was a scrapped alt. And we still haven't gotten any confirmation on who this is. That guy's never acknowledged it. The leading theory is that because remember, Joker was shown off before Persona 5 Royal was released. Uh, we think it was Kasumi. Mm-hmm. Because she's the only character in Persona with a ponytail that would really make sense. And there, none of the other Phantom Thieves, like like Makoto or An, they don't have yeah. ponytails, right? Yeah. Kasumi's the only one that makes sense. Plus, and, she, she is very close to Joker's design with the colors. Yeah, so. and I... I didn't pay close attention to pre-release detail for for P5R, but if I remember correctly, 
there was an air of mystery around costume when they showed her like two or three times before it came out, such that we weren't sure if this was a brand new character or if it was a female version of the protagonist because Persona 3 most notably when that game came out you could only play as a guy and then they came out with the updated version of that game and now you can play as a girl hmm. and romance the guys in that game yeah I think that at least I'm playing Persona 4 Golden right now and that's not an option so either Persona 4 never got that option or the version they just re-released doesn't have that option for some reason okay but that wasn't such a weird thing to think when you looked at Kasumi before the game came out. Okay. It was really up in the air. Like, is this just Joker girl or not? So it was like an F. So yeah. I can see that. Um, I just, I think it's really cool that, like, we probably know the answer, but that, you know, we'll never yeah. hear. Never truly sure. know. I love stuff like that. <laughs> like, like the Dr. Mario station shit. Um, what a fucking ride. Seriously, it's been like a roller coaster. We've been, we've, these might all get broken up, who knows, but we've, we've gone through all of Smash. One five hour long video. We could, and I could kill myself. Well, I don't want you to. Yeah. So we're not doing that right away. (laughs) Wait, guys, I know how to convince them. Daddy? No. Daddy! (laughs) <laughs> he has this, I I swear to God, he made this facial expression, and he looked like he was forty-five. <laughs> he looked like he had been forty-five, and I've regretted every child, another every child years. I ever had. That's great. Um, well, we can try wrapping this up because we don't need to go as long as I originally planned. But are there any characters you want to see changed? Yes. And I made a list. I mean, let's get the obvious two out right now. Ganondorf and Sonic. Yeah. Consistently the most disappointing characters in each game. Uh, What's going on? So my list of updated characters for potential next Smash game. Link. I really want to see his good ass moves in that game. Well, let, let's talk about Link. Because okay. I don't have my own list. Um, it's pretty much it for, like, uh, anything I have in an outline. I do maybe want to go character by character because I have a suggestion for Link, and I don't know if you agree with me on this or not. When you say you want good-ass moves from Link, what do you mean? I want moves from Link that, well, personally, I just would like more of his... Tears of the Kingdom-esque movement. I, I'm sick of the bombs. I'm sick of, like, just the upslash. I wish it would be a bit more creative. Like, imagine if, uh... I don't know, just... Th- there there seems to be, like, something that you can do, and I wish I could pinpoint it, but... I have a suggestion. I've been sitting on this idea for a long time, hmm. and I love it. Ever since Melee, we've had more than one Link. We had Link and Young Link, we had Link and Toon Link twice, and then, because they brought every character back, Young Link is here, right? Now, clearly, we're not going to have three Links in the next game. They're going to get rid of one. My idea is Toon Link we haven't seen in a long time. Young Link, just not very relevant. Like, I'd be fine with keeping one of them around, but I have a better idea for having more than one Link in the game. Because I, I, I kind of like the idea that every Smash game will in some way have two links i think because links had so many different incarnations so many different tools of course i am totally on board with the idea of having a link that purely represents breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom because there is way more than enough in just one of those games to make a new set alone both combined it's the same link makes perfect sense you have so much to work with from zone eye devices to champion abilities to remote bombs you got all of it but it would be really weird if, hypothetically, that were the only link we got next game, and they said, yeah, remember the 35 years of Zelda before that? Yeah, fuck it. It would feel really weird. So my idea is, rather than having a small link, you have the second link just be representative of everything from, like, 
the original game to Skyward Sword. So basically the the plain link we had before. Yeah. And then let whatever you would call the open world link go balls to the wall crazy, and then you still have the regular link that you can lean on for familiarity, right? That'd be end of Because that, that's yeah. still a cool moose in his own right. Yeah. Um just get rid of the, the mini links. Have have both of them be adults, you yeah. know. But they look different enough anyway. I <laughs> I love this idea. I don't know if people would agree with me. I I agree with you. I like that idea. It's um I don't I don't want to get rid of regular link. I don't. I definitely would love to see Ganon's design from Tears of the Kingdom in Smash. I'd also love to see Ganondorf be anything else. Yeah. I'm not even going to say he shouldn't have any melee attacks. I like the idea of him being a brawler, a sword fighter, and a magic user all in one. Mm-hmm. Like a little bit of CQC, a little bit of zoning, a little bit of sword attacks. Because he's had multiple instances of both throughout all of his appearances. Exactly. Uh, Sonic, I wrote just literally anything. Change just anything literally. about him. Anything about his moveset. Why is he using his Mario design when he's pretty much just classic Sonic with a homing attack? If you want to include classic Sonic, do it. I don't care. Right, but if you're using the Mario Make design, Sonic. right, and you don't even have to pull from Frontiers. No. You don't. Just do any. Really, okay. If we're only allowed to get one change, and it kind of wouldn't be enough for me, but if we could only pick one change, change his side beat to something. Because spin dash, you know, when you play Sonic, you hold down on the on the control stick. It makes too much sense for down special. Yeah. Side special, something else. What? I don't know, man. Uh, it's a fucking bounce attack, a boost, anything. a sidestep, anything. <clears throat> um, I, I put Peach, do the Peach Showtime version of her, which we don't know what it is going to be yet, but... I was. I just about wish this. it would be anything else. I was thinking about this last night. Is in particular, you can tell that they had to reach for all the Mario characters. Mario, I, I'm fine with the way he is now. Besides, Flood and to yeah. an extent Cape, yeah. but as a whole, like, so Mario is sometimes looked a little more serious. For most notably, like the Mario Strikers games. But for Smash, I always think to myself, I kind of wish here like happy, peppy, joyful Mario that I see in like the platformers. Mm-hmm. He's never looked this serious in platformers and this platform fighter. So like Mario fits the fighting game aesthetic because they made him work for it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say it's unnatural, but just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. It's so weird that I don't see Mario <laughs> smiling and going, Wahoo! You know? He goes, Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> Well, to be fair, do you really see any characters like that in this game doing that? It's like, wow. It's, okay, like Isabelle and Kirby, Pac-Man. You got a couple. You got a I couple. guess. I guess that's true. Especially yeah. when that's how they act in their home series. Yeah. I don't... Can you imagine Smash Mario going through, like, a new soup level? <laughs> but all the Mario characters, I, I feel like, could change a bit. Luigi and Peach, too. Like, they really don't have a lot to pull from. I would love if they made uh, Luigi a bit heavier, but also, like, the ability to jump higher. Because that's his whole yeah, original that's his gimmick. Whole thing. But also... He's a bit heavier because of the, uh... The Poltergust? Poltergust. Yeah. And, um... I'm even okay with it just being a grab. It doesn't even need to be a special for me. I but, guess. like, what the, what the fuck is the Cyclone, and what is Green Missile? What are we doing? And then Peach is, like, she has two attacks with her ass, and her side smash is a fucking frying pan or a golf club, and it's... She hides behind a toad for one move. Yeah, and listen, this is really the fault of the Mario franchise, because they don't give any of their characters enough to work with, besides, like, kind of Mario. Which is why I'm kind of leaning more towards the, like, do something with Peach from the Showtime game. I, I'm not saying they have to, but I'd say yeah. it'd be a nice change of pace for the Princess Peach we've always had. Yeah, I'm kind of iffy on that specific idea, just because, like, if that game just ends up being, like, Peach with copy abilities... 
like, uh, but I'm open to the idea. Next one, Samus. Samus? Give her the Metroid Dread colors. Oh, for sure. And, uh... And the, and the melee parry. Yes. Samus is not, like... She feels enough like Samus. Oh, yeah. I don't I'm not think saying big changes. Completely. I'm just saying updated. <clears throat> yeah. I would like, though, at least the the parry. I think yeah. that would be good. How about a brand new costume? Costco? Costume for your favorite Pikachu detective Pika... We can I move on. I would vomit <laughs> my fucking eyes. <laughs> We already have the perfect costume. It's Pikachu Libre. She's perfect. Exactly. Best girl. Um. <clears throat> what else we got? Olimar. So you played Pikmin 4. Yeah. Is that Olimar? <clears throat> Or is it some weird abomination thing? Yeah, so it's funny. So you know how like Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon was called Luigi's Mansion 2 in Europe? Pikmin 4 in Europe is called Alamar 4. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I can't, don't say that. Don't say that. Then don't monkey paw me, jackass. <laughs> That's not what monkey paw means. Then don't fucking trick me, asshole. See you then. <laughs> um, Alamar doesn't really get anything new the because the player character is like a, a custom no it could avatar. just be a skin or something um i do wonder what a moveset with ochi would look like but i as much as i don't like how olimar plays it's i wouldn't say they do a bad job representing pikmin as best as they can within a fighting game like you have to stretch yeah. so i i don't really have better ideas for olimar uh zelda Princess Zelda. I don't know what the update is going to be, <clears throat> but... I, I'm i going to say it. For every time that someone says, well, just give Zelda the champion abilities. I... Okay, I'm glad your face crunched too. Every time someone says that, a bone falls out of my fucking body. Because it's just like, oh, you mean the where she spent the whole game trying to unlock any ability? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I mean, I I can definitely say that for something like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, she has a moveset there, and she has magic flowers she can use. Yeah. And I will definitely say she's much more useful in Tears of the Kingdom in regards to her powers versus Breath of the Wild, so you could probably do something. Yeah, Zelda's moveset is just, for for now and for the foreseeable future, it's always going to be, you have to BS something. Because she doesn't have enough to work with outside the Warriors games. So that was my updated characters list. This is uh, Ariel's updated character list. Who? Ariel's, our friend from Canada. So Zelda's neutral, she does like the spin, and then her up air, she has that explosive flame. Um, I don't remember where others are. What about Zelda's Ariel's? I can pretend like I'm funny. <laughs> you certainly can, and it, <laughs> pretending is fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's she, why Smash is cool. She was with me on a lot of things, but um, she said something about Krom's moveset. Something about updating that a little bit. I can't remember what she said in particular about Krom. It's assuming that next game we let three characters from the same game come back, two of them being essentially Marth clones. <laughs> She said Lucas, and I, I can't remember. I think she said something about the snake somehow. The rope snake? Yeah, you could. I mean, Ness and Lucas are both weird because you know how they have, like, PK Fire and PK Freeze and PK Thunder? Mm -hmm. So those spells are usually attributed to a different character. Ness and Lucas borrow from their teammates to work in Smash. Oh. So you can already... There's wiggle room for okay. them. And the last one she had for updated characters was Wario. Yeah. Just something about him needs to be updated. Wario feels very weird. I he doesn't feel like he has the personality, but then like his up tilt is he just like shoves both his hands in the air, and his back air is he just, just flips. Yeah, it's not much. And it's like this doesn't even look like someone fighting anymore. 
and you have this big burly guy. You know? Um, A lot of the Mario characters are just weird. Do you want to hear the characters I would cut? I I honestly didn't even prepare for this conversation, even though I kind of saw it coming. Let's just get into... Uh, mostly so people don't kill us for cutting their favorite character. Let's just talk about newcomers we want to see. I have that too. Um, Let me know when you're ready for me to go. What's what's your first one? Shantae. Sure. I think Shantae. Why not? Go for it. I don't think she's super likely, but like, you know, why not? I think she'd be fun. Chun Li. Everyone says Chun Li. That's our next Street Fighter one. I it really it. should be. I get it. Um, if not her, then absolutely Jerry Han. If you want to pick like a oh, weird. Oh, Jerry. Ooh. Just oh. someone a bit sadistic. And I like, don't like it about this weird. <laughs> it makes me feel weird things that I like it. I had a weird idea. I've never played Xenoblade 3, but one of the protagonists from them, either Noah or the Neo, was Neo. her name? Yeah. The or, of the water. because I don't know how their combat is, but I know that they're supposed to be like in a relationship type thing. What if they fought together? I, like an ice climbers thing. I don't want to pick a character where I, I haven't played their game, so I'm not going to say anything about Xenoblade Three. It's just speculation on my part, but also um, it's, it's probably a character we'll get for sure. Yeah, Paper Mario. Paper Mario feels like if you're not going to do Waluigi, and you're not going to you really do Toad, need another representative for Mario. It feels like don't do another pick. Mario enemy. Just do Paper Mario. Yeah, Paper Mario's fault. Don't do like a an Koopa, obvious don't be a fucking wall. Um, and I, I, I think Paper Mario's an inevitability, but like, is it next time or do we wait for longer after that? One day, one day we're gonna get Paper Mario. Uh, Dante. Again, I know nothing about him. Dante, please put me in the He seems to have enough pull. That everyone really likes him, so I'm I'm not entirely sure, but. Messy Hilo Sucker Day, please! Uh, Fire Emblem Toothpaste Head. Okay. Whatever their name is, okay. I don't know what their name Ryan, is. Ryan, this list needs to be characters you want. No, oh, these are just characters I predict going in. You, do you know what Fire Emblem Engage is about? No. It's about summoning Fire Emblem characters. That's what their move set would be, and if it's not, then they play like Marth, like in the game they play like Marth. So those are your two options. Okay, moving on. Glad you Emmy. Research. Okay. I don't. I think I talked to you about this. Yes, you did a little bit. So we have three options for Metroid: Silux, who appeared in one shitty DS game and will be in Prime Four, but who cares? Or Ravenbeak, or Emmy. Ravenbeak, you definitely have to shrink down his size. Oh, which I think sure. would be weird for a character like him. If I had a nickel for every time they'd have to do that to a Metroid character, I'd have two nickels. <laughs> but it's weird that it happened twice. Um, I think the Emmy would be more interesting because I don't know. There's something about Ravenbeak where, like, I think when you can imagine a character's new set perfectly for Smash, it's like, oh yeah. I've got it all figured out, and Sakurai will put them in the game, and it'll be exactly what I already thought of five years ago. I think the Emmy has such a unique body shape, and such unique proportions, movement animations, and variations for attacks, that it would be weird. And we also don't really have anybody that's creepy. We have intimidating, like Bowser or Sephiroth, and we have outright scary right like Wrigley, but I think part of what makes the Metroid games really special, particularly Fusion and Dread, but in general, is Metroid makes you feel alone and creeped out and you wonder about what's creeping around the corner. Not outright outright, you know, jump scare fear, but looming uncanny terror, you know? And I think the Emmy would be a perfect way to encapsulate that. Now, whether or not you care about such poetic garbage <laughs> is going to vary from person to person. But I also just think, like, yeah, Ravenbeak would be fine. Yeah. Emmy, I think, would be a really out there interesting pick. And not, I don't even think it's impossible, per se. 
You never know. Drew. Yeah. As Say you it. once said before. Say something stupid. Ready. As Why are you, you laughing? As you once said before, <clears throat> you said this to me <clears throat> specifically. I'm you in this scenario. I'm, it's Ryan. I changed my mind. You can have Sprigatito. Meowscarada is in Smash. Meowscarada is another one of those where it's like I can see their moveset perfectly in my head, and like, yeah, okay. I I get bored of the Pokemon eventually. Like, oh, listen, of course I would I would explode all over the room, mm -hmm. gallons of juice. Of course I would, but like, yeah, okay. Pokemon's you know, like they're always given something every game. Whereas, like, we don't always know if we're going to get a Mario character. We don't always know if we're going to get uh, an Animal Crossing character. So those are the, the characters I wonder more about. You know, Scrata, yeah, that's fine. They're a humanoid. They fight like a magician. Cool, okay. Their jab will be the cat claws. Nice. I'll, I'll trim my list down a little bit and just let you say some stuff. Oh, like you don't have any more? Right oh, now? I do. It's just that the list goes on for a little bit. Well, I'm, I might have some that I share with you. Okay. Bandana Waddle Dee. Got him. Yeah. Uh, I can see his moveset perfectly. Yep. Kirby plays like Smash. He has pretty much a neutral side up and down special. Uh, fine. He's light and floaty like Kirby. He's got a big disjoint with the spear and like his side special is a project. Okay, whatever. Whatever. Magalore. <laughs> Most popular antagonist of the series? Check. Wasn't enough until we got Star Allies and then playable in update. Check. Okay, but that was with everyone else. Return to Dreamland Remake. That game is brought back into the public conscience. Gets his own mode where they expand on the already full moveset and Star Allies. D give me Egg Juke. <laughs> I, I need him so bad. I need to give him a hug and a cup of warm cocoa and hope that he doesn't kill all of us again. Please? Please. I want to play as a Kirby villain. DDD does not count, Meta Knight does not count. Shut up. I want the guys that turn into Eldritch Abominations! Please, he can have portals and energy spheres and the, That'd be cool. the, the, and the ship. <laughs> oh, the ship would be the final smash. <sighs> no, no, it's gonna be his his version of the Ultra Sword that he kills the Master Crown with. Oh, okay. I guess. Not as interesting, granted. But we're there. Um... I don't know what the concept for this character would be, but I like Ashley from WarioWare. I racked my brain for a good while about how to make a WarioWare character center around using the minigames as moves, and I can't figure it out, because half of them are just, like, inhuman movements, and the other half are sports. If I may, <laughs> if I may, Ashley's minigames, as of late, have always been centering around food. I'm scared. I think you could do weird food spells. Not, like, conjuring up food, actually, but, like, Say you make like some sort of like rocket sandwich or some shit, something stupid. But, but I'm just saying something like that. That's the thing is, I, I feel like if you put Ashley in the game, she's just a generic magic user, which doesn't necessarily make her interesting. And she'd end up just being a character that like we include her because she's popular, like Isabel, which I'm not opposed to. I I love it, but you don't necessarily have a lot to work with. <laughs> now, speaking of Animal Crossing. Everyone says that Isabel's the mascot of Animal Crossing. Kind of. Isabel was introduced in the 3DS game, the fourth game in the series. And even then, she's more like a co-mascot. Where is Tom Nook? Every time you think of Animal Crossing, anyone, you think of Tom Nook. Whether you like him or not, he is one of the most instantly recognizable Nintendo characters. For that alone, I think it's kind of weird that he's not a playable character. But also, what would his moveset be? Well, fucking anything. Yeah, They'd be literally a third villager and Isabel, you know? I, it's time. What was the... Remember the theory I had a while back? No. Timmy and Tommy? The, not like before Tom. Not before Tom, man. <laughs> However, I love them. They are best boys. And the 
my last Nintendo character, because we can talk about third price forever, but it's so obvious, Octolings. And no, no, they're not a clone character. Splatoon has like 15 types of weapons, and that's just main weapons. That's not counting sub-weapons. Mm -hmm. That's not counting special attacks. I like had Octoling on mine too. So painfully obvious. And Octoling is going to be in the next game, and they're going to be a clone, and I'm going to do illegal things as a result. Next time on Dateline. <laughs> so, I just want to go through the last of mine, because you kind of went through a few of mine, but um, I figured. I said uh, I have two different kinds of Final Fantasy reps. Excuse you, that fart is live and on stream. So, Man, you sure didn't have to say that. I certainly did. And Tifa, Brawler, and Safe for Work. <laughs> In a lot of ways, safe for, about as safe as Pyromithra. Or Zack from FF7. Uh, Crisis Core. Crisis Core. Okay, so we're... You, you might be making some people upset. I don't have a stake in Final Fantasy, but you have to keep in mind, even if it's justified with the remake series still going on, we are continuing to intentionally only represent Final Fantasy VII. That's which is true. cool. That's Important true. game, big game. Where's six? Where's nine? Yeah. Where's 15? That's true. So before you spout that in public and, and get stabbed by a Noctis Enjoyer, I just I want you to be prepared for that. Okay. I don't listen. I want Barrett. I want our first proper black man in Smash. I really do. Cause Doc Lewis, I don't, it's not happening. Give me Barrett. <laughs> the um. Uh, if we're gonna go into third parties, all right. So you only get one Sonic character. Who is it? Eggman. My fellow Eggman enjoyer. <laughs> oh, man. T listen, Tails would be great. I just like Eggman more. Um, Ariel wanted Tails. She was hopeful for him. Tails is good, too. I just... I think you could go either way. Really, I think the, you, you can pick from five, honestly, and they'd all make sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Eggman, Tails, Knuckles... We were discussing Metal one Sonic day Shadow. recently where we yeah. said Eggman, but I, I put a twist on it where I said... Eggman and the mech. I would love that. I would prefer Eggman to represent everything, including SA2. I think you could hypothetically have... Give him a little bit of everything. Classic, adventure, modern. However, even if it were just SA2, that's still a lot to work with. And that's a very nice... How do I say this? Rounding. It's a nice screenshot of the adventure area, uh, era for Sonic. Here, here's one of my biggest things is that Sonic is too classic for my taste. Eggman, I'm not saying he, he would be too classic, but I'm saying I wish they'd flare it up a little bit. Now, I, I don't disagree, but I think part of the issue you have is that Sonic has leaned too much into classic stuff in like the last decade. Well, hold on. Just... Let me also say, I see a lot of, like, let's say Eggman did get in, I see him kind of acting as Bowser Jr. a lot. Bowser Jr., but better, yeah. Like, I don't want to see another Bowser Jr., where it's just the vehicle, like, of that. Like, I prefer it be a little bit more interesting. Yeah, that's fair. I, get, I, I think either way I'd be fine. I just think the, the mobile Eggmobile, it ends up representing every era and then if you want to go extra crazy, he's a stance fighter, and you get one whole stance dedicated to SA2, his only playable appearance. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a nice meet halfway. I'm objectively right, you're wrong. No. But, um... Sans, I need Sans. It's, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just saying, if his me costume got more Twitter engagements than Minecraft, Steve, and Sora. <laughs> Which Steve also broke the fucking internet. There's a non-zero chance, especially since Deltarune. And he's a character. Mm -hmm. And there's also suspicions that that Sans is the exact same Sans in Undertale, whereas every other character is like an AU thing. Yeah. Toby? I, I'm making a blood oath right now. <laughs> if you can 
get Sans into any future Smash game, you don't even have to just stop making Chapter 3. Cancel Deltarune. <laughs> it's okay. I'll live. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen, Spamton. My felt. <laughs> Talk about a big shot move <laughs> coming over to Sakurai's house and BTFOing him and then chatting his wife while Sakurai sits in the living room with his Pyra amiibo. Oh my god. Giga chat. <laughs> and he's still not done making chapter three, which he won't release until four and five are also done in three years. Never mind, I hate this man. Fuck Toby Fox. Hey, that remix you did for Smith? Mm -mm. Get back to work. Al <laughs> Alucard. Of course. I think it's all but guaranteed, really. Ooh, you think so? Because, I don't know if I go that far, but... Because that model in the game for the assist trophy looks pretty good, and I think that just needs some kind of tweaks to it to where it's like, then just include it in the game. Now, if you want to go that far with another assist trophy like that, most popular character in the series, Zero is right there. He's also on my list. And if you've seen Marvel vs. Capcom, or his home series... Yeah. Huh. Absolutely. Ooh. Zero is another one. The only other ones I really have on my list are Ring Fit Trainer to just replace Wii U, or the Wii Fit Trainer. Ooh, I want them both, though. I or, get it. Or whatever. But, um... Oh. And my last one is Miss Pac-Man. Just that guy's kind of like an old skin. Okay, I have to have this conversation. I know what conversation you're going to say. Okay. But it's just kind of like, if they can somehow get it, just, that's an old skin. If Namco feels like buying the rights, it's just unfortunate because clearly if they have them by now, and they've opted it's kind using, of, yeah. was it Pac-Miss or Pac-Mom sense or Pac-Girl? I don't even know. Dude, the, the Pac-Man World remake that came out, it's a completely different character design, and they don't call her Miss Pac-Man. So I I think, you know, never say never, but probably not for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. Yeah. I would like it too. I, I do want to have one more conversation about a character I hear a lot in speculation that I need to clown on. By the and way. I, I want to hear your opinion on it. I just want to let you know, that was my list of new characters. Ariel has her own list. <laughs> okay, let's go through that then. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. Um, Jean from by Bayonetta. Okay. Like her friend from Bayonetta. Oh, John. Or John, yeah, that's that's what it is, sorry. Okay. Um, Easy echo. Impa or Tetra? Okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Yeah, exactly. I'll save it. <laughs> she, she said Ninten from Earthbound. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, Ariel, you're gonna be mad at me. <laughs> Tycho Drum? Tycho Drum Master? Another Namco rep. It's a it's a rhythm game. He's, he's a drum. Okay. He's a drum with a face. Uh, Nabbit, which... I, oh. what? Okay. I don't know, but... Ariel, we need to have a conversation tonight. Uh, she, then she said Tails. Rodin, which is... Rodon from... Or, yeah, Rodon. She kept saying Rodin, but, um... She's wrong. Dixie Kong. Okay, we're back. Tom Nook. Okay. <laughs> um... Yuna Rakami? Persona 4? Oh, you is the player character from P4. Oh, she spelled it all as one word. Uh, Narakami is probably his last name, okay. but, uh, yeah. It's very convenient I'm playing through P4 right now. <laughs> uh, Doom Slayer. Okay. Bomberman. Okay. Cuphead. Okay. And uh, Frisk. Cri back at it again with the cringe! Sans is right there, motherfucker. And Nabbit? Even over Waluigi and Toad, Nabbit? Ooh. I don't know, bro. Mmm. <laughs> I, I, I didn't judge her. I just said I wanted to hear her on. Oh, I'm face. judging. Here's here's my gavel. I'm wearing the the, the black robe, and I, we need wait. to have a conversation. If there's any character requests uh, I've heard for 20 years that I want to clown on, 
and I want your thoughts on this as a, as a Zelda fan, because you're w way more into Zelda than I am. I've casually enjoyed a few games. You're more the Zelda head. Mm -hmm. My hot take is that the only reason people have ever requested Impa is because she's the only kind of recurring Zelda character you can take, because you don't want to take a character from just one game, like Midna. Right? Or at least that seems to be the reason why we haven't got anyone like that yeah. since. You know, like Skull Kid or Gear Him. So, people looked for a character that was in more than one game and said Impa. And then they saw her actually be cool in Hyrule Warriors only. And they said, okay, now she has a moveset. Well, the thing with her in Ocarina of Time is that she's basically a ninja. Yes. And so there's a little in, credence to do something. She is in Skyward Sword too, but okay. So it's now kind of how have, like they make sheep do things out of doing nothing. Cool. So no, now we have two fake ninja characters from Zelda. Also, I will say this really quick. Her move set in Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity, fucking king. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's both move sets are fun. I'm just saying. I. Let me be clear. I'm clowning on people that are saying we need Impa in because oh. she's the next obvious Zelda bit. No, the fuck no, she's we not. No, C tier character. People who want Impa, that's fine. But uh, we, listen. If it happens, the I people who understand. say we need <clears throat> Impa because we need more new Zelda, don't use the N word like that. That is irresponsible. Don't, okay? There are kids here, okay? You can't just throw it out like that without Dude, a pass. Put that thing away. There are, like, kids here. Yep. Don't ever say we need blank in Smash. Yeah. We are past that era. We have everyone we N-word. Mm -hmm. Don't be like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Cut it out. I just, I don't, I don't see Impa as like, wow, that's the next Zelda character. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. sure, I guess. I'd be hyped for it. Just because I... Yeah, like, if they're fun, they're fun. Like, I don't care where a character comes from, but like... She, she plays in... In Age of Calamity, she has such a fun moveset, and I could see that really... Well, I think it would be fun for Smash because... It's not the typical Smash that I've always seen. It's kind of like spirit type fighting. Yeah. Where it's like she has like different types of like things helping her. So it's it's just unique. Yeah. Um. The the real what I'm trying to say is I can't go uh, five minutes without clowning on somebody because I have low self esteem. That's fine. So your characters. We pretty much went through everybody. Okay. Well. I went through everybody that I wanted. <clears throat> Now, we've said who we want. Who's making the chopping block? I I did not think this through. Well, let me run you down. My mine, I believe, are the most logical. Doctor Mario. Yeah. Uh, Pichu. Yeah. Jigglypuff. <sighs> now I realize I wrote that before what you said earlier. However, I think she hasn't really. I don't know. I, listen, I, I I don't know how to feel about it. I completely understand. I'm never gonna clown on somebody for thinking that way, but if they tr if they thought about asking her twice now, and she's made it back both times, like okay, now she along with the other eleven mainstays have been in every game. So I'm not gonna say it's too late, but like why? Would you like you? I don't know might why well wouldn't you? Her. Who knows? I'm not sure, but I think it's it's different when it's the original clone character. Well, you're not way. clone. I mean, original joke character. Piranha Plant can uh, GTFO. Young Link, uh, which we already kind of discussed in further. He's my favorite Link, but like I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Sheik. That's a controversial take, but I agree. I I wouldn't be opposed to her staying. I just you know. I I might say it's more the one game syndrome thing. I had Roy on my list, but now I'm kind of thinking about it. Maybe Lucina. I I would cut Lucina and Crom because they're offshoots of Marth and Roy, and Crom was not my more next different. one. 
Yeah, Crom was my next And then one. any of the other Fire Emblem characters you can keep because they're original. My next one, Pokemon Trainer. Oh, okay. But... We're gonna fight. It's replaced with a different Pokemon Trainer with different Pokemon. They still have three? Yeah. It's not just two, it's three? It's It has to be three of the starter Pokemon that are kind of similar to how it works. Ooh, I don't think they have to be starter Pokemon, though. They could be, for sure. But they could be, but I'm saying, like... I don't think you get more iconic than the original Kanto. You're not going to try and recreate with, like, oh, here's the Kalos starter sprout. So I think mm -hmm. you might as well just go with, like, three really popular Pokemon. Well, either way, I also put Lucario on here. I... I understand Lucario is very popular. I've never liked his playstyle in Smash. It's okay. It's it's just kind of hit or miss. Um, Greninja. Sad to see Greninja go. Of all the one-off Pokemon they've put in, Greninja's my favorite, but hmm. I will accept it. I put Duck Hunt. Because I've never really been... Like, yes, that's that's a good, funny character. You can do that. I just don't see why you would keep him. He doesn't... He does Like, it. it's not interesting enough for me. No, okay. We, we should also keep in mind with this conversation that these, are, these characters will never, ever come back. They can come back as DLC or a free update, or they can just skip a game or two. Yeah, or they, could, yeah, or they could just come back. It's not like time the next the Smash game is the last one. Yeah. It, there will never be a last Smash game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a franchise. It'll keep going. So, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, I think Ice Climbers might go. Not again, though. Let them stay for one more game again, <laughs> please. <laughs> and, uh, Byleth. I get it. Curiously, though. N not out of my hatred for any of the yeah. direct thing, just... But with that said, curiously, not Corrin. Corrin, I thought, kind of had enough unique moves to make them a bit different. I, I thought I think Corn and Byleth are both unique enough. They could be. I, I I'm not opposed to either. But I'm just saying that was my that was my thinking. But um, she said instead of uh, Krom on her list, she said Ike. Um, oh no! I like Fire Emblem having a heavyweight. No. Um, Lucina. She also said, and she said Corin and okay. Byleth. Okay. Um, that was about the only differences on her list. But um, the last thing I really wanted to say, which I made some notes for, because we talked about our experience with Smash, hers was that she started with uh, the Subspace Emissary in Brawl. She started playing that, and um, she played Smash 4 with her siblings and whatnot, enjoyed Smash Ultimate. And I asked her the same question I'm about to ask you, which is, what were your favorite DLC characters from Pack 1 and 2? More specifically, what was your favorite character from the first pack and the second pack? Like, fun to play or, like, hype? For any reason. As a whole, for pack, pack one, I actually didn't feel that strong on, but, um, ultimately, I actually think it's Joker. Even <laughs> though I had not played Persona 5 until after uh, Joker was released. You are also and with Ariel then, and she it's said It's now maybe my favorite game of all time. Really? Maybe you it's Any I need days I could change. Games. Yeah. There's a couple games up there, but ooh. It's a good one. She also said Joker. I'm gonna say Banjo, just because I was wanting that so bad. Because I I played Banjo years a few years ago. Yeah. And I really I was like, oh my gosh, he would be perfect for Smash. Yep. So I was when I saw him in, I I lost it. You were you were there when I lost it. Oh yeah, we watched that direct together, bro. They showed off Breath of the Wild too. <laughs> yeah, I never expected that. Um, what was what what about the second fighter pass? My favorite for pack two. I don't know if this is gonna be shocking. It, it couldn't. Minecraft be, puppet Steve. It couldn't be anyone else. You say that as a joke. Fuck you. It is Steve. That's because fine. It's not so much the character inclusion that's never ever, but if if you went back in time and posted an anonymous leak on 4chan, how Steve would work in Smash and the work involved to make it happen, every mm -hmm. single person in the thread 
would call you a lying bitch. <laughs> and it's real. Say what you want about Sora, which is fair, but when you see Sora play, like, he's definitely unique. He's got some unique, like, aerial combos and, like, mid-air physics. He's got unique interactions with, like, his side and up specials, but he didn't have to reprogram every stage in the game for Sora. Yep. Who else would you do that for? They were... I'm so glad that the Minecraft characters aren't just, oh yeah, my forward air is diamond pickaxe. Yeah. And my they actually special is with it. minecart. You can mine and craft with the crafting table mm -hmm. and build. You're playing Minecraft. <sighs> you're not playing Smash anymore. You're playing Minecraft in 2D. And you're just fighting other video game characters. Mm -hmm. Even the stage is perfect. The only weird thing with the Minecraft inclusion was no C4 music, but that's because C4 just stopped making music for Minecraft because of like legal disputes. Yeah. The music we got, we only got seven songs, the least of any DLC character. I think of any franchise in Smash now, that music almost makes you tear up every time. It sounds so it is beautiful really good. and emotional. And it's from like the Minecraft, like, I don't even know what, the, what it's called, like Adventure Series or something. Yeah, a couple different games. Uh, not necessarily my biggest reaction for the character no, I played yeah. most, but just for the sake of admiring the work put in and seeing the end result turn out somehow so well. And it helps that the character isn't garbage. Like, they're actually yeah, pretty decent. both viable and uh, fun. Whereas Min Min is viable, but uh, you know, how about we cut Min Min next time? Let's let's keep Spring Stadium. Let's keep all of the entire Arms OST they included because that game has a killer soundtrack. Just no Arms character. That's fine. Here, here's Min Min's assist trophy. Only character to be a fighter one game and assist <laughs> this next. The um, Ariel said Pyra and Mithra. And I probably have to echo her sentiment because... If we're talking about reaction... Oh, oh no, though. For Ultimate, at least, Ridley was my biggest. Easily. But DLC, for sure. Ridley, though, that... Because Ridley was the original Never Ever. Yeah, that's Where true. Sakurai said, like, once per game, No, shut up, I'm not doing it. Ridley was the Never Ever. But then after that, it was K. Roll, and we got K. Roll and Banjo, and we got them. But Ridley was the one I wanted the most of all the Rekunst Melee never gonna happen. And it was funny too, because it's like, I say Pyre and Mithra, and I'm in the back of my head, I'm thinking, but Sephiroth, and it's just like, I love Sephiroth. But I wanted Pyre and Mithra so bad, and then I also, it, Sephiroth's a bit hard for me to control, he's very like, He's, he's very a hard. Unwieldy. He's he's kind of hard to to pin down and master yeah. his techniques. Pyron Mithra kind of fits my playstyle, where it's like you can go back and forth between either the fast character or the, the heavy hitter, and it's just like it, it kind of works for me. Well, yeah, it's interesting because uh, in other words, Pyron Mithra's playstyle is uh, being good at the game. <laughs> yeah, which is <laughs> just very good. And it's like I so I, I sometimes challenge myself to play as like just Mithra or just Pyra and I, I really try to like but the, but then I kind of realize I'm stunting myself in enjoyment yeah and I'm I just mean, like I need to, to learn play both too. yeah and it's like I'm, I really should try to learn both and like when I've learned both it's been really fun yeah it's just like then you feel like a master because mm -hmm. you feel like then you're playing the game you're not stunting yeah yourself. you feel like you're multitasking you feel like a god <sighs> but that was we got a smash game with Ridley. But yeah. We listen, we got a game where we got every character everyone's ever wanted. And, and Byleth and Min Min. <laughs> it's just unfair. It's Sans! I know it's not really him, but <laughs> <laughs>